<laughs> oh man, look at them whole page in here, man. Oops. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> Ayana has made it first. She is <laughs> in first place. <laughs> this is my first lazy Saturday in like three months. So I've had all day to just sit around and do nothing. And it, it's it's great. <laughs> right. Got to enjoy it, man. Yes. Appreciate it. Nothing like uh, enjoying your, or having time to yourself and stuff, man. Give you a peace of mind. Mm-hmm. Let me see something real quick. I end up putting this thing on. Make sure I gotta send them invites. If you got some people, invite them if you can. About 10 people, 10, 5 people, whatever, whoever you got. I don't like when my friends say they see me on the news. It's so embarrassing. Send you a what? I don't like when they see me on like lives because then they try to. <laughs> I don't know. They bully me a little bit. All right. Hold on. Give me one second, y'all. Actually came back from <laughs> being messy. How do I send a video to the host? What kind of video? Like a video on TikTok? Bing, 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 bing. You might as well change the background for me. No, on YouTube. Uh, oh, you copy the link and you uh, you copy the link from YouTube and then you paste it in the DM, and he gotta click the link and this will bring him back to YouTube. All right, but yeah, I'm about to drop and now uh, to make these videos. I'll be back later, man. Hey, Tara, love you, bro. Yana, oh, yeah, for sure, my brother, man. Uh, what's up, favorite day? I'll see you. Or Megan in the yeah. building. Yeah, hey, I'm here, Spirit. I'll be here all day. <laughs> oh, yeah, ready. I'm going to swing back in the corner in the big body bench. You know that, brother. <laughs> all right. All right, my dog. What's popping? We on commercial break. No, we're just waiting, I think. Oh, okay. I was about to make a sponsor. Who's my bad? I was looking at something. 
just, just to do it. Well, I was talking about people. I told them to come back. They ain't look at that man. They hard headed it, signed up. It, it's Saturday, bro. It's Saturday. Yeah, I refreshed my life. It was getting interesting, man. Uh, Hello, Ayana. Hello. I have to adjust. I have to do the proper thing and address everybody first. That's the right mm-hmm. thing. Yeah, you remember you got <laughs> you had bad times when you don't do that. <laughs> Well, you know, I just come Hey, we got I'm history, though. It's, so, yeah. <laughs> it's always something. You catch, you catch me on a Friday or Saturday night, I might come in, throw shit up, and just leave. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Who the heck? A first Who name, Dot? Right? Why, Who for thought? Why not, right? Yo, you know what? I want to ask you this question. Oh, this is the same person that was... <laughs> Right. I can't believe I feel for that. I was literally in Peter room. That was the same person that was in they were playing that song. I should have. <laughs> this person is going down the for you page requesting up playing that song. I literally did. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so funny to me because I literally just watched that on my other backup. On my back, <laughs> somebody went in Peter room with that. Oh, that's. These are pretty good questions, man. I got I got some deep answers if you want me to touch on these. Yeah, things. go ahead and hit them with the Hormiga style, you know. Let me clean my throat. Hold up. Uh-oh. <coughs> <Watch out. clears throat> All right. Okay, is finding yourself real? Okay, the answer is yes. Okay. The uh, can you find yourself by yourself? Um you need you need um you need support you need you need some type of support because when when you finding yourself you're going to love yourself more which is having to deal with a lot of difficulties facing the truth looking at yourself in the mirror and accepting yourself for who you are instead of who you want yourself to be it's a very tough uh, thing to do you know when you are reflecting and you don't know how to reflect in other words like whatever you see in the mirror, you're not accurately describing who you really are. I think those are things that you need to learn how to do first before you do that. Um, can you find yourself by yourself? Um, you have to go into a deep selfishness. And the people that love you, if, if there are any, they should be able to understand that. Um, and if they don't, then the hell with them. Okay, so can you trust yourself 100% and why? Um, you know that we're not perfect, we're going to make mistakes, but you could trust yourself that if you do make a mistake, that you're not going to go down a rabbit hole, that you'll be able to uh, pick up quickly, you know. That, that's the whole point of making mistakes. You make a mistake doesn't mean that the next time you do it, you're going to do it perfectly. That just could mean that you picked up something of the mistake so that you could do something differently the next time you do it. It all goes back to what we talk about, Kevin, foundation. Foundation if your foundation is strong, you don't have to redo the foundation. You could start from the foundation. You don't have to start all over. Once your foundation is strong, anything that you build on top will not break the foundation. But if your foundation is weak, it's going to destroy everything and everything on top of it. So, And the last question, which I love, is, wait, can you trust yourself 100% and why? Um, in the beginning, it's hard because that's one of the reasons why people have problems trusting is because they see themselves in other people. They think that other people are capable of doing, you know what I'm saying, what they're doing. So we see our mischief in other people and we can't trust them. So we kind of reveal ourselves, you know what I'm saying, through other people because we don't trust them with the things that we know we do wrong or, or what we do with the wrong intentions. So can you trust yourself? After a while, after a while, when you start practicing it and you actually become righteous and you start doing things right, then you can start trusting yourself. That's only when you have been practicing doing the right thing. But why would you trust yourself if you're fucking up? There's no way on earth that you could trust yourself if you're fucking up because you're trusting yourself to fuck up. That's that's great. Right. Okay, so you tell when you tell a person you need to find yourself, what do you personally mean and how are you able to know if they are themselves already? If you have to go somewhere to find your peace love and joy then you're not ready if you can find it inside of yourself and you take it with you wherever you go and you don't have to rely on somebody else or another place to get those things then that means that you've put the right work 
into yourself. You stand tall. You're confident. You've done the research. You pray. You do your exercise. You write. You know how to express yourself. You hang out with people of higher value, people that you can learn something from, people that elevate you, that root for you to win. You know, that's when you know you've done it. When, you, when you're in a circle where you feel comfortable around people that appreciate you and that you're willing to appreciate, you know, yourself. So the way you know is real simple. You've got to stop comparing yourself to other people and be you. Compare yourself to the person you was yesterday. That way you know you're on the right track. But there's no one way of describing any of these things. That's just my personal opinion about it, you know? Back, back up, baby. It got real deep earlier. Look, some of my people ain't come back though. I was Except listening. To, I other. was listening to you for a while. I was on the low. I, I was doing the. Op- oh, yeah, you, yeah, you was in there. I seen you when you said, "Let's go." <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty good, though, man. But I'm gonna be on this thing, so I had to refresh. I didn't want to lose my first section. <laughs> it's going on here. YouTube. You know, people need to hear these things, man. It's a really touchy subject. It's a really touchy subject when you start talking about. Yeah, everybody said everybody sounds the same. You gotta love yourself first before you love anybody else. It starts sounding like Forrest Gump. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like everybody is repeating the same shit in every room that you go to. Okay, fine. You have to love yourself first before you love somebody else. Okay, you want you mind telling me how you do that? How do you go about that? How do you mm-hmm. apply that? So everybody sounds the same, but they ain't got no answers, no application, no. Oh, I got to you to practice it. You know, I got you. I know how to do that. <laughs> I talk about it all the time, though. But yeah, I do believe everything do start off with self, though, to give anything else genuinely. So you got to anything you ask for is something you need to know how to do with first. Got to. Otherwise, you just ref, you just looking at you reflect on whatever somebody give you. Well, you did it. I did it. I do it. You did it. And some I, people, I just, just like you said, some people will be um putting themselves in other people like okay that's the way they love so that means that mean that's the way i gotta live or something like that but they really don't really don't know you know but once people gonna find out as many ways to love and i think even with love or loving yourself it, i notice when you love yourself more you start caring more about yourself and even with love it's got something to do with care that's like the source of love i noticed well yeah you have to put, apply some of that into yourself you know what i've noticed kevin is real simple you know everybody's chasing something kevin everybody's chasing the bag everybody's chasing a better look everybody's chasing this chasing the next person want to be like this want to be like that but nobody's chasing themselves i'm not saying ain't nobody chasing who or what you need to do in order to put you in the place where you want to be but, right and it's, and it's 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 really sad it's really sad that so many people lost their identity they don't have no individualism or nothing to bring to the table because they sound like everybody else. Uh-huh. Well, low key, we are everybody else, though. I mean, we are. We all get our traits we, and habits from, in a way of talking from a lot of other people, and because we adaptable, that's what it is. But it's just like sometimes you gotta go you're against yourself. Supposed to be the sometimes. closest people, right? You're supposed to be the. If you yep. take the three, four, or five closest people to you, those are the people that you are. All all of those people. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You're going to get some ways, you're going to get some, you know, even if you're the strongest, man. That's why a lot of people, you got to just, you might have to let go. I think I had a job, I mean, uh, a live about that yet, yesterday, day before yesterday, one of them about let go and all that stuff. It's, it's some stuff you got to let go to become a better person because some people can't hold you back. No matter how strong you think you are, you know what I'm saying? You start taking bad habits from people. You know, it's just, I mean, like that, that influence and that, that all that stuff is real. That junk is real. You know, that energy stuff is real. So if you around a bunch of, what the, what the Tony up here? Nah, you got to go back another live and get cussed out. Nah, don't be coming up here. Nah, when you got all cussed uh, out. And stuff. <laughs> I was uh, in there with my back up looking at you. <laughs> God, wait, oh I don't know what happened. It seemed like some stuff was going on. I was about to get sucked in. I forgot I was live. I'm like, hold up. I'm live. I'm What I'm doing. <laughs> Oh shit! Yeah. Oh, he was in the live. We was just then. Oh yeah, I see you made in there too. Like, what you doing in there? You said you was coming. Hey, Malaysian went in. I don't know what the hell. Yeah, it's it's a whole bunch of contingency with the people up there. We we got some people playing the fence. 
And you obviously, you know, when you play the fence, you get hit and crossfire. So and she's tired of that, John. She don't she don't yeah. like people that play the fence. So what's your called, definition of that though? People out. What playing the fence? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I want to see because everybody got their own thing. Because I know, I know that sometimes they it's call like people living. that it's being like, neutral. Like being they call them playing the fence too. Which Pretty I would have a problem with because I don't pick it. sides. <laughs> it, it's kind of it's kind of like that. Um, so pretty much, pretty much, I would say it's like living in the gray area, which would be, I guess, willful ignorance to the truth to an extent. Obviously, we yeah. understand the truth doesn't apply to everybody equally all the time in every situation. But you know, obviously. Um, Let's just say, I'll say it like this. People are trying to find the good in really bad and ugly char- characterized people right now. That's the problem. They're trying to find the Wait, good. Wait, hold on. So how is that a problem? Very ugly people. Why is that? Because it's detrimental. That's called cool. optimistic it's, it's mentality. Detrimental. Yeah, it is, but it's very detrimental to other people. That's the thing. If this and, person and, is and being, like I said, everybody's not, not right and true. It's not. It's not. It's not. Um. You know. Every everything's not right and truthful in every situation all the time. So this is one of those nuanced situations. So in other words, this person that is being very nasty and ugly to certain other people. Um. There are people on our side. I guess you could say our side, that are trying to find the good in them, and to an extent is messing everybody up because now there's like trust issues and stuff like that. We can't really. You know. So who and, is that? You know, obviously, that who you who you saying is being that way? Because I've I've been I've been up to date on it. I've been I know what's going on too, though, and I'm kind of in the middle. Right? I'm in the middle of it just because I chose to because I like peace. Some people I notice they don't like peace. That's their problem. But who you saying is playing? Who you saying is that? Then who was getting so called exposed? Not exposed. It was just like pretty much she was just calling out some 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 unruly ass behavior, I guess. Um, it was okay. two people on the panel you probably seen up there. Um, <clears throat> my bad. Uh, it was Chicago gent, black Chicago gentleman, and uh, secret identity. You know they kind of. I knew y'all about. They knew you about to say that though, and I realized she had a uh, what you call it got a pro- man. Man, it's crazy because I, I mess with all them people, but I learned another side by just listening to the situation. And I feel like they might not like me soon because I'm I'm listening on both ends. And I'm not, like I said, I don't pick on no either side either because I do want peace at the end of the day. That's always been my message in general. I notice some people in on, on here just want the war to continue. They want wars to keep on going because everybody, and it's an ego war. It's an ego-driven thing. And I look at it, every, every side got a problem that's going on on both ends. Nobody perfect. So I, I would say it like this. I'm saying like this because there there is some there is some things going on and I'm gonna let you know there was a truce that was tried to be called a few times a few times and one side is literally saying no I want problems always we've had people that are not even on TikTok that are saying please stop and people and 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 the other side is saying no I'm going to talk about this just because. There's other people, even basically one of the most, the most positive, neutral people on the app. What the hell? Oh, stop. Okay. Um, yeah, one of the most positive, neutral people on the app is saying, um, you know, can we please have a truce? Like, that's what I was saying. You know, talking and they'll stop talking and everything will just be good. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. Everything will be fine. And they're still saying no. So it's like, where, where do we... I get you. Like, I know exactly what you're talking about and all that, too, because I talked to her. I talked to her, too, right? Because I know you're talking about it's a, it's a her. And, so yeah, and so I now, was, she was coming at me. She was she was coming at me. Huh? Yeah, no, no, I'm saying, like, so now people are asking for peace from one side. And they're like, well, if they don't stop y'all, y'all just gonna have to stop. But it's like, they're doing this, like, unprovoked now. It's like at first there was something going on in between them. Cool, we understood, got it right. Now the shit is just unprovoked. They're just doing it because they don't got nothing else to talk, talk about. Talk about right. 
and now everybody on this side is oh, I know a few like people. Annoyed. I don't like, like feel like a couple of them. The so, yeah, so I don't, I don't like, like saying that, but some of them seem like they the devil. Actually, I'm gonna say her name. I'm gonna drop her name too, cause I don't care. <laughs> that that woman crown, bro. <sighs> I don't yeah, know what's so going on with her, she's, man. She's not, she's, she's I never. I don't know why she just attacked all them people out of nowhere and made a live about that. And I, I'm trying to, I try to be yeah, cool no, with her for real. I'm trying to, but it's like she, another one that's really prolonging this so-called war that's going on. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's so going on with her. Messy. Messy. That's you know what I'm saying? Huh? That light, you talking about light skin girl? Uh, no, nah, she crown, not light skin. Right? This other girl is like a caramel dark skin woman or something like that. She just, I don't know what it is. And she say she you got neutral crown, lives right? and all this other stuff and positive. No, but she, no, every she's, time she, she's especially if you talk about traditional in front of her, she be bashing the mess out of that and be trying to say, y'all, isn't. I'm like, bro, why are you so, I don't get why she's so angry. You know, I, was, I had to really stop going to her page and stuff because she always, I don't know why she's so angry, man. She want to keep this war keep going. And the other thing, I feel like I can get through like the said, big, the biggest person. The, see the world burn. Huh? She just want to see the world, she just wants to see the world burn. But the thing is, is like all of them are doing that every single one of them and then they're expecting everybody else to kind of just you know be nice and that's what a lot of people that are playing the middle ground that are that are that'll they'll come over there and they'll say y'all just 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 chill just chill as if as if they're starting mess and it's like yo everyone over here is chill they're the reason why people over here keep getting angry is because the people that play the air quotations middle ground keep coming over here and telling them to chill out when they're the ones doing the bullshit. So it's like, why are y'all even talking to us? If y'all want to keep, if y'all want to say chill, go tell it to people over there. So people are still like, what? that's why people keep getting angry. And they're like, you're telling us to chill for a while. It's like, they have a bashing lie. And then they come over okay. to us and be like, I know they're talking about this, but y'all got to chill. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Like it yeah. makes no sense. I, well, I'm big so, on that. It do make a lot of sense, but that's why I say I can tell. That's why I can tell a lot about people that ain't here. That's why people need to come in my live though, for real. Because a lot of, and I know there's a lot of people, and even your talking points too, man. It's like what, like when do any anybody gonna ever? Because even with wars, right? Somebody got to call the truth. Somebody got to be the bigger person. You know what I'm saying? Because like this will go for on forever. Just because somebody else is miserable, that don't mean you got to be miserable with them. So yeah, somebody got to do it. And I yeah, and I want to be that type. That's the reason I why I, I am a neutral person because somebody got to chill one day. Somebody do I was saying, because, know, like, I, what I, is I, the I point? This distinction. Okay, let me make this distinction. So, so I would say there's a there, there's a difference between the neutral and right of defense. Neutral, I, I, you don't. I would say you don't have much to do with it. You hear you hear about it, but you don't got nothing to do with it. So you just sit and you just hear about it. And then there's people that play both sides. That's the fence riders. I get you. I get you. Yeah. So, or so change their their viewpoints to... on both sides too. Yeah, yeah, they kind of let truth and then their feelings gray area type shit. That's what we're trying. That's what we're dealing with right now. And that's the thing. I'm telling you, there are people that has been on our side that have been like, you know what? I'll go over there. Truce. I'm telling you, I've heard three times where they tried to say, we'll have a truce. Nobody talk about nobody no more. Every single time there was a no, literally blatant out. No, like literally the it's literally a no. I'm going to keep talking about you. And then they expect no one to respond, right? So when these people hear about these lives and stuff like this, right? Mm -hmm. The the neutral people, the, the not neutral people, the the fence riders, they come over to the middle, to the other side, and they'll say, "Well, I know they're talking about you, blah blah blah. I want to be where I want, but I'm gonna let y'all know, just chill out." And it's like, yo, we're more, more than like that. We're just trying to live. We don't even have that many people we talk to. It's probably like forty to fifty people in the live. Probably like. Two, three hundred people that come in there every so once in a while. So we talk about this. We talk about what we talk about. Those are the ones that literally stay attached up under people's nut sacks and talk about them. But people come over to us and tell us to be the bigger person. Most okay, of our yeah, that's different. Don't got shit yeah, to I do feel you on that. Most, yeah, uh, like most of our shit okay. don't. It don't have nothing to do with. What the heck happened? I don't know what happened. But yeah, I, I feel you on that though. I feel you. But just because I'm in the middle between, you hear me? I'm, I'm, yeah, you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna I'm say, gonna say yeah. my input. So yeah, I understand. Yeah, you know the the whole. 
that was saying, like, I know the whole, I understand the whole truth thing, sure. Like I said, I've always been for that. Like I said, I mean, even though I, I'm about smoke, like, if you talk shit about me, I'm going to talk shit back. I'm, I'm going to defend myself. That's just what it is. I'm going to defend my name. Blah, blah, blah. But at yeah, this I used point, to be like this shit is getting drug out. Like, yeah, this, this shit is, it's, right now, it's just childish. At this point, this is just extremely childish. Yeah. Everybody wants it to stop. But we got grown-ass people acting like straight children. Straight yeah. children, and they don't want to. They don't want to stop. It's not like nobody on this side is over here still talking about that shit. No one is. Everybody would just love to drop the shit, but nobody wants to over there. And that's the, the problem, problem. Okay, I'm gonna put it this way. The problem is the person people, that's recording it. Wise. Yeah, they're talking about people's wives, people's sexuality, all types of shit. I know like, exactly what you're talking about, talking about right? Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about. It yeah, is childish though, and that's why. Because it, I don't know, I don't get it, and I feel like that person is drama based. But it's like I feel like I could still get through them because I was in their room for a minute too. I was up in their panel, and her panel, right? And I was like, it's like it's weird. It's like I feel it's it's, it's so weird, man. It's like she want to. It's confusing. Maybe it's a manipulation game though. But I feel like pretty much that because I'm gonna try to at least try because I end up adding that chick back or whatever. Because like. I'm gonna just see gonna because I'm the type I'm gonna try to address both sides is wrong when they wrong or whatever. I'm not that type that sit there right. and I'm and me myself and I feel like that's who the problem is the people that's reporting things. If you gotta go on somebody else live and they report and start somebody else back up because the thing is people gonna talk whatever you know they gonna do what yeah, they gonna and, do but and, some and people just trying to literally instigate right. things that ain't being really said. But yeah, indeed, I do feel that one person wrong because right, they got a right. picture up uh, and they uh. Of one of our peoples yeah. inside they thing, <laughs> and yeah, they got and it as a, a subscription thing. I noticed. I'm like, dang, that's just that's wild. Yeah, I'm gonna dip for a little bit, and maybe I'll be back. All right, for sure. But yeah, I don't know. I let them do what they do, though. Whatever. <clears throat> Trying to see if this fight about to come on in a minute, though. But, yeah, that new war is just crazy for no movies. reason. Huh? I said, what y'all think say? about these lists? Oh. Oh, that list? Oh, man. My, my bad. My bad. Can you, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm not saying, yeah. you know, that you're incompetent and you probably can't do it. But I'm telling you, we done had some of the most, most calmest people come over there, and then they get literally damn near called names and you know kicked off of their show so like i said i mean if you can't do it cool that's that's whatever i mean i'm not knocking you if you can do it do it but like i said me personally i don't think there's no point in it and this shit is not going to stop because obviously you know we got some child sex people over there. yeah that's you you right is. about that and we got yeah, it ain't gonna be that serious that it's gonna take out my real life because people got to remember you still got a real life and a lot of people be forgetting about that you know, when, when, if it's some stuff that's bringing me down, I'm not about to even entertain it, man. A lot of us do this stuff and not noticing it, and I'm not about to do that. You know, I'm not about yeah. to get serious oh, yeah, and have yeah, some yeah, TikTok yeah. beef. That's the dumbest stuff I ever heard in my life. <laughs> the yeah, freak. Like say, they, People they, don't they, got they, no real they, life. How you doing? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. But yeah, man. <clears throat> Yeah, I ain't been trying to really, as much as I want to help, I don't want to be uh, tied in the situation. Um, but I do, I always, that's always been my goal to try to make peace within every situation if it can. Because a lot of people are just, like I said, and what I see is a lot of trauma exchanges. You know, a lot of us really don't know what being a bigger person is. And we feel like that's a, prime, a, prime, a problem or a crime. And once people actually learn that, and maybe they'll live a better life. A lot of us still depending on stuff we can't control. You know what I'm saying? I, I have got to a point people want to talk about me. It is what it is. Like, I don't care. That's their perception of me. You know what I'm saying? I guess I'm not about to sit there and let me go check this person because they saying that. Like, that's going to change their mind. If they feel like you no good, you checking them ain't going to do anything. You just going to end up, especially if you go on their panel, they already, they hold people, if they want to believe that person, they already going to stick with believing that person. You ain't about to change nobody's mind. That'd be crazy. I let people talk, man. Good, good or bad, whatever they want to say about me, that's that still put my name out here. It is what it is. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I understand that. But, you know, like I said, there are some people that do want a virtuous output. And that's just how it is. Obviously, you know, they, they're putting out crazy messages about people on this app. And that's what people don't like. There's only so much you can mess with a man before you, before you especially you mess with him. Well, go ahead. What's, what's up, Six? What's up, Six? Bro? But, uh, but, yeah, that's just what it is. You know, she, she you know, they plan. I mean, me, personally. We'll talk about this, but if soon as shit get real, like you know, side of TikTok, I'm gonna let you know. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't care who you are. I don't care. Gender don't matter. None of that. Shit. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah, we go. At the end of the day, we gonna see a lot of stuff. Really don't matter. We've been wasted. We really just been. Wasting our energy for nothing because we really have real life to attend to. I look at it, if nothing is uplifting me or anything, I'm not. I'm not worried about it, man. I'm. I, it's so much negative energy and all this stuff that's out here. That's you know, it does nothing for us but make us worse. I, I always say, if the app is making you worse, you don't need to be on it, or you need to find you a new search engine and find you something that actually can handle whatever you can, you know, whatever you can tolerate. A lot of us like putting ourselves in situations and, and we only can blame ourselves for even putting ourselves in it. Can't blame nobody else. We already knew the we knew the risk we was taking when we actually to, decided to show our face on a app or put our words on all that stuff. So we already knew that's we once we put ourselves in the open, do we, we reap what you sow? Whatever come to you is what's gonna come to you. It's gonna be good or bad. You don't get to choose that. <laughs> that's just what it is. Six four, what's the deal, man? He must have talking that whole entire time. His mic messing up. <laughs> so I don't even see. I see a uh, mute, but it ain't. That boy, they got him a new Bluetooth. It ain't working. Look, <laughs> 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 he trying his best. That mute and no mute is going crazy. <laughs> he can't. Even... Oh, man. Drop and come back. Yeah, try that or something, because I don't hear any. This, that's why I about to say, this is yeah, the quietest yeah. I ever heard. Six four. That's how you know it. That's, <laughs> that's what you know. It's Mike got to be messed up. <laughs> uh, man. But, yeah, man. I ain't got time, yeah, man. If it ain't no, I look at if, if it ain't no solution at the end of situations, it is just no point. There's no point of prolonging anything. I let people stay mad, be mad. It is what it is. You know, I got grace, but I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not silly enough to sit here and give a person a chance that don't like me to, to hurt, uh, turn my back on them or something like that to where they end up hurt, harming me. I'm not about, to, I'm not that dumb. You know what I'm saying? But I still, I, uh, I have grace with people. I, I I forgive people, but sometimes you gotta love people from afar. That's just what it is. I'm not about to. Yeah, you know, I can't waste your energy with it. You gotta know when to call it a quits. You plant your seeds and dip on. But I, I had a live about this. Add a fire to fire. Don't never put out a fire. I don't know why people think that. A lot of us, all of us, think we the toughest. That's the problem. But it never get anywhere. So <laughs> that just be crazy. Got to be nowadays because a lot of people mentality can't take it. You got to be the the bigger person. Once you don't entertain something or entertain, you know, entertain a person, or whatever. That's that's when the fire uh, goes out. You know what I'm saying? Because they have nothing to project themselves on or or try to prove on. Because they love when you when you when you uh come back to or respond back to whatever they put out. People just love that stuff. They they fuel mm -hmm. off that, but otherwise, if you can't respond, they become miserable. They become like, "Dang, it's nothing. I have no other power I can do." <laughs> yeah, people gonna realize it one day. A lot of stuff just ain't worth it. It ain't worth it if it ain't making you any better. It just ain't. People gotta realize the good and the bad. It does serve you though. It serves right. you to move to to basically put you in a position to move forward and not mm -hmm. sit in one spot. Because honestly, yep. it's going to make you move. It's going to make you do things that you're not comfortable with doing, but you know that it has to be done because examples must be uh, made and set for a person to know, oh, I ain't going to never try them on that again. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter how much they care about me. Doesn't matter how much they done for me or love me. At the end of the day, if they don't tolerate it, they're going to show that they, that they don't tolerate it. And people think just because you love them, you're supposed to accept a lot of bullshit. And life not oh. like that. That's why I do believe that, too, about the lessons. I believe that, too. Sometimes you got to make lessons, but then again, you got to think about the outcome of it. Because sometimes we can be, and that's the problem. A lot of us feel like we can give each other a lesson, but you got to realize who you're trying to give a lesson to sometimes. Because sometimes they don't never work out how we want to. They never do. But uh, because at the end of the day, it's still going to take that one person to truth. Now, if you did, if you, if you, let me hit that real quick. If you try to set a lesson and they didn't learn from it, then you got to be waiting for your turn now. You know what I'm saying? To take a lesson from them. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you got to depend. It just depends. All of us think, like I said, all of us do think we are the lesson uh, straighters and all that stuff, but sometimes it just don't work like that. It's just like, nah, I'm not about to fight with some of these young dogs, because if I do beat them, right, somebody you might learn a lesson, but some of them just automatically going to try to unalive you. That's Some people just don't give up. So a lot of us be thinking or we ain't going to give up. You know, we done messed up right there. And they, they ain't going to give up until you off the face of this earth. So it's like, I'd rather not play that game. You know what I'm saying? We really got to pick and choose our battles. That's just how it is. Everybody ain't worth the time. Everybody on here is trying to uh, exchange their traumas. All of A lot of people is just doing it. Like I said, I don't know if I made that word up, but a lot of people is trying to do that. They That's why people can't wait to give people that smoke. Or they can't wait to, you know, let me show how tough I am. You don't know how my my, my mouth do. My mouth do this and all that and all whatever. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that sounds weird. But, but yeah, and sure people be like it. that. They just so be so happy so to do so that or happy. talk about that. But, hey, everybody think they the toughest, but it's, 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 in reality, you're not. <laughs> Nobody's not. And that's why I remain neutral. Facts. And that's why I'm always, always I'm gonna always be. Shoot. Sure. I, I, I stand on what I, I stand on my shit. I don't take no side. Um, I go nice. to I, I I mainly fuck with what I know what's right. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Same here. Yeah, they gotta be about the side. Right. They gotta be about the particular side for me. It's about what's right. And if you on some bullshit, you on some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? I don't say, but one thing I don't do, I don't go in people's lives who I don't, who I know ain't shit. I can tell by what they talking about that they, they full of shit. So I ain't even got to go in there. I ain't even got to go in there. But one thing I said, I saw with that little shit that's jumping off is this is what happens when you take it off the internet. You know, people exchanging numbers and knowing each other wives. You ain't supposed to know that shit. This the internet. <laughs> You ain't supposed to know none of that shit. You think I'm about to give some, let you talk? Hell no, nah, this shit private. You ain't supposed to know what Kev's girlfriend look like. You ain't supposed to know what my wife look like. Right, if they ain't got right. profiles, you ain't supposed to know what they look like. You ain't got to talk to them. For what? You talking to me. I'm the person that you got the problem with. And I just, I will refuse to let some biatches on this internet push me into letting them communicate with some of my wife with my with my anybody personal are, are you crazy I wish I would they ain't got they ain't, they ain't that damn important Thanks. at all real shit that's what, at that's what all. pick and choose your battle that's what I be saying that's all I'm saying all of us think we the savior and the warriors of things. <laughs> that junk is not true, man. <laughs> I'm not going to be the one that, that set this person straight. I'm going to be the one that, okay, all right. If somebody had the same mentality with you, can they set you straight? You know what I'm saying? But that, oh, no, no, I ain't that. I ain't the one. Everybody swear I, I ain't the one. You could be the one any day on that situation. Right. Or you man, can't be the one. I mean, like, it goes both ways. <laughs> As them niggas in the cemetery, they thought they wasn't the one neither. Facts, facts. Or they, yeah, right. Or they was the one that ended up in the cemetery. So <laughs> it just go both that's ways, man. Everybody on here, and that's my thing. Everybody 
that's why I'm saying this ego stuff is serious, man. Pride will get you unalive for real. Just like love will get you unalive. It's just like you got to really pick and choose or how you give in that. Or we, you, you know, set in that situation because it's just boy. And that's the reason why I try to, you know, that's why I'm talking about that humble stuff, man. You got it. We got to be humble, man. Like, cause like it's some of this, a lot of this stuff just not worth it. And we only reacting off our little weak feelings. You know what I'm saying? As soon as uh, I feel a certain way, so I must show his off or something like that. Whatever. Suck it up. You know what I'm saying? Most of the time we making these decisions off, off feelings and stuff. We claim we so logical that we make these dumb decisions off feelings and stuff when we could have just simply avoided it or just let just let this person go or just simply or just, just got off a app because there ain't no such thing as a beef without a TikTok beef if you just get off the app or get or change your rooms you go to you can change all that stuff people be acting like they forced to be this if somebody talk a joke about you you don't have to prove yourself once you confident in yourself right that's why i know a lot of people lack confidence because once i start being more confident in myself i start caring less of what people are saying about me i ain't got time to check nobody and be like hey you said this about me you know what i'm saying i want to see you have my name in your mouth or something like that. i ain't got time for that you know what I'm saying? Because people gonna have their name in your mouth no matter what. That is what you signed up for when you got on this internet. You literally, when you put your, my name, laugh for learn on here. So from that point, it's up to how people gonna judge that name and whatever, how they want to use it. Once I done made this name and got online with it, I can't be the one that choose how people gonna interpret because they're gonna do what they want anyways. You know what I'm saying? They're gonna do what they want with it. It don't, it don't, so you gotta realize this is stuff you can't control. You can't control other Preach. people once you publicize yourself. You can't. Preach. Um, Preach. Preach, <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Black, I'm about to cuss you out too, man. You were just in the other line. Now I'm about to cuss you out. You ain't about to come hey, in for the sight of talking jam. Because of everybody out there got cussed out and didn't want to come over here now. Like, <laughs> you, know, you, you know, you know what? This is this is my thing. And, and this is my problem. I, and I hate to bring that here. But the thing is is what, what I hate is the same dynamic we talk about all the time. It's just like DBN. A woman can hit you nine million times. Then you hit her one time. Now you the villain. You the villain. So right. now you gotta take you gotta take the verbal abuse. You know, you talking about my wife, and then I say something to you, and now I'm the villain. <laughs> can, can somebody explain that to me? The world we live in, nah, uh, you know what I'm saying? That's the world we live in. You're, and that's what be that's what begin to me. They know the world catered to the women and feelings. Just feelings and women, right? Mm -hmm. We can say feelings not because it's men that act like women that be in their feelings. So they cater to feelings, right? And women. So we see that. That's how we how it is, and it, it just ain't fair. But then when you address it and say that, they and them be the main ones. That's why I be saying privileged people don't understand that they privileged. They just don't, they really don't know. And they become more spoiled. Because they never had to bring themselves off from the ground because they always had somebody that supported them and their feelings, right? They always had that. So they going to always feel like they're right. Even though I heard somebody say, you should never hit a woman back or something like that. But then again, you could you never said about a woman hitting on a man. But that's all. It seemed like it's okay. Well, uh, this is what she said. She like, well, he probably deserved it. What the? F so we living in this type of world? That's the crazy part. That junk is crazy. <laughs> That's the enabling stuff. That means you 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 basically trying to let people get away with stuff because you got what between your legs so you, you can allow it, right? Or I okay, guess the difference in the strengths or whatever. But then again, if you know the strengths, why are you trying it? But people want they because exactly. they know they got law against them. They got all that stuff. So oh, for them, I meant. They want to do that, so that's why they go past the limits and say, okay, I feel a certain way, so I'm going to sock you in your jaw. I get to do that now, and then I get to make an excuse of how I feel. What if the man feeling the same exact way? But it ain't right. So if it ain't right with him, it's not right with you. Accountability got to go on both ends. These excuses be crazy. But yeah. Right. Some women test to see how, how much they can get away with or how far they can take things. Seeing how tough their man is. We going to test your strength. Test, test to see um, how much you let us get away with when it comes to our mouth. And Man, truth be told, that's a wrap on that. Truth be told. A woman's mouth can make or break a man because depending on if she on her knees or not. Well, yeah, right. No, okay. that's not. <laughs> <laughs> I had to do that was too easy. <laughs> I'm dead, but um, <sighs> yeah, I'm dead. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so that was just too easy. I could. 
All right, uh, but yeah, I hear you, black, uh, black. Uh, they, that's that's wild, man. And that's the world we live in, in for real, man. That's why I just rather most of the time I just, just try to stay to myself on situations like that, man. Because it's just it's unfairness, and if we cry about it, we weak. You know what I'm saying? So we can't. We gotta keep it to ourselves, though. But it is what it is. I don't know. My brother codified in the middle. How you feeling, my brother? <clears throat> What's going on, bro? Can I be heard? Yeah, for sure, man. Hey, man. Can you find yourself by yourself? Absolutely. Uh, who else is going to find you besides you? Man. Bruh. I think people just fail to look at themselves and decide on what kind of life they want to live. They really do, man. It's like they confused out here or something. It's like they, everything they do is based on what somebody else think of them. They don't want to come up with standards and principles that they decide that they want to live by. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, like, like the other, like, bro, I got to say it the other day when I was trying to talk. And uh, I don't know, where you... You was there, right? I think you oh, was there. Oh, Miss Deb from? Yeah, man. Oh, yeah, I was there. <laughs> of course, I, I was the one that tried that. to make the peace in there. That's what I try to do, yeah, man. I try yeah, to bring understanding yeah. on both ends. <laughs> I appreciate that, man. But yeah. it's like, man, if, if I can't talk to people, I mean, because she, she set the tone for her life. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And... Those things were up there, so she see how I operate. And if you're gonna allow me to speak, this is what I want. Mm -hmm. Can I get some courtesy? Like, can I just say this without being interrupted? Like the first time I spoke, I asked for everybody to mute, and she had to specifically tell him to mute, which was weird because everybody else did it. Then the next time come around, he just he just the first thing he did was interrupt me, and I was just like, you know what? This is not the conditions for me. And I paused to see what Miss Deb was going to say. And she didn't say anything. And I, you know, basically saluted and dropped down. You know, because I know I wasn't going to be able to tell that young dude anything. Because men, we don't, we don't do a lot of talking when it comes to conflict. You know, and it, it just seemed like, you know, the, the feminist sons and daughters, I mean, when it comes to the feminine sons, it's like they behave just like women or females, because uh, cause women have self-control, but they they behave just they behave just like adult girls. And from a female, I could take a little bit of talking, you know, because I I could try to reason with them, hopefully. But that right there, I don't know what the hell that was. <laughs> that that was. That was, I don't know what that was, man. Yeah, that person yeah. been the same way all the time. So, yeah, I ain't about to say no name, but it's just, he always been no. like that, though. It's just got to, you got to know who you talking to. That's all it be sometimes. <laughs> I was actually like that with, uh, I say this person name, though. I was like that with Charles. <laughs> this dude, he used to make me mad when I first came in, but then I now I start noticing his characters. That's why I say I, I, I get on this app to understand who I'm talking to. That's what I do. You have rather, to. I rather understand than be understood most of the time. So I know what I'm saying or how this is going to get to what people's agenda might be and all that stuff. And I got to realize, cause I have fell short a couple of times. I was like, no, what the, what is up with, uh, just like I was on my with Charles and stuff. I'm like, but I realized now he just, I use him like a, as a trying to see who, uh, emotions is in control and all that stuff. So I'm like, all right. So since I know his character, cause a lot of people just really need, they need prayer for real, man. That's what it is. I ain't gonna lie. I don't know if people believe in it or not, but, they really need it, man. And I, like I said, I'm I'm always been that type to try to just work on being the bigger person on situations. I can't let people, and, and I know it's a hard thing. I can't let people let me stoop to their level. I I, mean, I just can't do that, man. That's something I had to be aware of. It's something I had to teach myself because I'm like, it's literally people that just want you to be like them. You, they want that same, uh, the misery like that. That misery loves company that comes in different styles. It really is like that. Like people really want you to be as miserable as them, or they want you to feel to match their energy and all that stuff. That's the type. That's what it is. And I'm like, I can't be. I'm not about to be like that. I just can't be like that. I'm gonna let 
hey, hey, feel your way. It is what it is. I'm not gonna even show you that it affected me. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just like this. It's just, Absolutely. But, but Miss Deb, I thing, see you down there. The, the thing, the thing is, to me, is that you know I'm a a very direct individual. It, it, nothing about me is vague and ambiguous. I, I'm not speaking in 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 subliminals. If I got something to say about you, I'm gonna say it about you, okay? And if I don't say it about you, it's because I'm not trying to get banned on on TikTok. <laughs> but the thing is that I, I, I'm, I'm being I'm being 100, you know. I mean, because I, I'll just ban for a week because you know I told somebody how it is. But the thing is that we live in a world where people will not accept their own accountability. For where they are in life, they're not. Everybody else is to blame. So if, if you if you telling me you need to find yourself, that's an excuse. Were you ever lost? <clears throat> but if you're lost, then whose fault is that? Because mm. you got you got the blueprint. You got information overload. We didn't have this kind of information when I was twenty. We didn't have, Thanks. you know, Google, Bing, none of this shit. I, I couldn't afford Encyclopedia Britannica, World Book Encyclopedia. I couldn't afford the encyclopedia from, from Kmart, <laughs> you know? And so mm -hmm. the fact of the matter is that we have all this technology, all this information, but our kids are dumber. Our kids are dumber. And then... This is what I, I, I had an epiphany this morning, okay? I had an epiphany this morning because we hear a lot of this generation, Gen Zers, uh, talking about they don't want to work. They shouldn't have to work. They shouldn't have to pay for food. They shouldn't have to pay for housing. They shouldn't have to do anything. And I realized why that is. Because they're too stupid to fill out an application. And I'm, kids, actually, look, look, Black. You, hold on. Who do you think the, 11, who you think the source 11, of that, though? 11, uh, hold on, 11% of our kids are reading and doing math at level. At level. No Child Left Behind was the biggest farce ever. I said this 35 years ago, and it's come to fruition today. This, this, this is where we're at today. We are being educated out of the workforce because people can't fill out applications you are of no value to anybody if you can't read, write, or reason. That's where we are today. Mm -hmm. But I want to ask you this, though. I know we like blaming a child that this and they lack and lazy and all this stuff, right? But I think it's a source to that, though. I have got to a point now in my life to realize that some of these things came from somewhere. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to say it, whatever. I feel like it, it, it actually, it comes from the parents. I don't think these children just get it on their own. And we talk about them being on phones Absolutely. and all this stuff, but who's giving them the phones? You see what I'm saying? Absolutely. Who's giving them all this I, I stuff? It, huh? You know, you know, check this out. My buddy was in the Air Force with me. My buddy, we've been school friends since high school. So we talk about we've been friends since 1977. Mm -hmm. So it's three of us. We've been friends for 40 years. He was a, a teacher or a principal in the Chicago Public Schools. And these mothers are coming to the school and they won't let them allow their sons or daughters to be held back. You, you heard what I said, right? Wow. These mothers won't allow their children to be held back because they're not getting the basics, the fundamentals, they're not getting so they can't move to the next step. You haven't mastered the basics. And they keep going and they keep pushing them through. And then we, we, we end up with a, a culture of people who can't read, write, or reason. And, 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 and I, I'm gonna call a spade a spade. Now, yes, this was a racist trope. It was put there for us not to succeed. But when you understand that, then that, that means you have to work harder. Mm -hmm. my, my second priority in life is to make as much money as I can with the skills I have I don't care about racism because we're not going to stop it it's always going to be there so what I'm are you like going to you do to better that. yourself 
What are you gonna Thanks. do by yourself? That's what I'll what be saying. Do? What are you gonna do to make your life better? Okay, all right, so what you didn't get hugged enough by your mother, or, or, or loved enough by your father, or, 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 or white chief people don't like you. What are you gonna do to make your life better? You gonna succumb to that shit? <laughs> I really wish people could. I I really wish people can understand what you said, cause that's what I do. But they be thinking out. I, I don't know. They be mad at me when I talk like this, though. But it's it's that's cause you escaping this victim mentality. We okay. We know a lot of things happen in life. We're going through a lot of things. It's so much stuff. It's a lot of stuff going on. But my whole thing is. We got to put in our minds that we got to make it any type of way we can with what we got right now. That's what I'm trying to, I'll be trying to get to because we can only point fingers for so long, but what are we doing with what we doing now? Is, is we really even trying about, you know, with all the stuff we crying about, is we really trying? A lot of us don't put no work in. We get lazier. We use, we use the same different excuses or whatever while we not getting somewhere, but we not really even trying that hard. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want my kids, even if I just have kids, I'm not going to even put this in, put certain things in their mind because I'm going to let them know whatever you want to do, you got you can make it happen. You just got to try. You got to just try your hardest and make it happen. And if it don't happen, it just ain't meant. Because just like you said, especially with that racism thing, that stuff ain't going to never, it ain't changing. We can cuss each other out, fight. I mean, I understand everybody got their parts in this world and they can, might can reduce it, right? Or talk about different things. But it's still going to be around. It's been going around before we was even born. But since ancestors, right? We was even probably racist with our own kind. You know what I'm saying? Because we was, we're not... The thing is, we be acting like we innocent people just because of the color of our skin, right? None of us is innocent. All of us on the... If, if, if we can give each other a chance to get some power or greed, we'll take over one another. It's just how it is. But, humans are really... But, but humans they, are really bad. All of us have some bad but, in us. We got bad in us. That's just what it is. None of us are innocent. It takes a strong mind to grow or try to to become better. You know what I'm saying? A lot of us want to think we innocent, but we not. But that's just being real. That's being real. But I like how you said that, though, man. We got to work with what we get, and that's all I be trying to tell people. Work with what we get and try to do the best you can while you living. Because we can't cry our way, and we're going to cry our way to the grave and ain't did nothing to contribute to life. At least help somebody else that could be, especially when you become better. But that's one thing we don't get. We want to, we, we get better and then we want to look down on the next person or something like that. That's the problem. You know what I'm saying? That jump, it'd be crazy. We don't help each other. Then that, 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 what they say, the crab in the barrel stuff. We hate on each other too much. That's with everything. We, How we going to get anywhere? We, 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 uh, check, check this out. I, I get hated on because I'm old. Well, shit, I know a lot of people that make it this age. <laughs> It's you know? just being grateful. That's I, I, all it takes. Right. Gratefulness. I, 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 Carter, I look I, like you trying I, to say I, something. I'm gonna let. You. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me say this real quick. I I, I put up a post, and it said, mm -hmm. "If you were neglected as a child, that's your parents' fault. If you are neglected as an adult, that's your fault. Mm. See, as children, we didn't have control over our lives. People did what they wanted to do to us." hands you know physical verbal um the public couldn't even come and snatch you out of your family house and run you through the system but as adults and let me tell you even as a child i would think of simple solutions to a lot of the stuff that i saw happening knew i couldn't do anything about it but i had those thoughts i'm like damn why don't they just do this why they just don't do that that to solve that problem but as i got older i mean i was like you know what it's gonna be a time where i'm gonna have full control of my life and i'm gonna be able even if i wasn't taught certain tools to navigate this society i will be at a place where i could go find out how to you know get those tools teach them teach myself those tools pay somebody to teach me those tools and then I'll be able to apply them to my life it may take me two three four five years but I could do that see Thanks. once you become an adult is really like zero excuses Thank you know you can't complain about a lot of things if you the one that's doing them to yourself 
He about to make me throw my mic, yeah. <laughs> yeah man, but you know, you know what, though? You, you're right about that, man. I was on the panel with some young guys, with a young girl and a young guy, and they was doing that same age, generation blaming crap. And I said, you know what? I'm sick of that. What did y'all expect to happen? Because I didn't expect nothing from the people above me because they gave us the game. And I didn't criticize them for what they went through during the time they were going through it because I wasn't here. And a lot of y'all are bitching about some shit that happened and you wasn't even a thought in the universe. How is you letting something from 1973 fuck with you in 2023 you had nothing to do with that experience what you going through has nothing to do is not even connected to that shit yet when the people who actually live try to let you know you get upset talking about well we got a lot there's something you can learn from us too what the fuck I'm gonna learn from you I've been here 30 years longer than you what the hell you think you gonna pop up and tell me new I was here when the computer was a whole fucking room. You got here when it was able to be in your hand. What you gonna tell me about technology and its advancements? You wasn't here when technology was advancing. You was here when technology was advanced. We were here while it was building, while it was advancing. So why would I listen unless you're gonna tell me something so extraordinary new? But what you know is what? there? You know what, six four. What I had to come to realize is that some of us, and I just happen to be one of the ones that didn't go through it. Go through what I'm about to say. Some of us has that that weakness has been beat into them at a young age, and then they got comfortable. They they learned how mm. to survive in that pain. So as they became adults, long as they were able to survive, they didn't have a will to do anything else to thrive. You, you get what I'm saying? I mean, it's, it, I mean, it's really even gotten so bad to where they wouldn't even. These some of these people aren't comfortable unless they're going through a certain amount of pain. Mm. These are the ones that, you know, for the ones who did the work, we can see them. And, and, and you just got to be able to be, you know what, it's no, it's no, no matter how much you talk to them, bro, they just not going to do it. See, that's why that you, if you know better, you will do better. That's not true. A lot of them know better and they won't do better. Oh, okay. You get what I'm saying? Get they, they could they could clearly see what you're talking about and then they'll be like you know what i hear you but i don't want to do all of that i'm all right what? Being, you just I'm, said it bro. i'm all right being right here being stupid i don't need to know what to say to the police when i get put no no i'm gonna just do what i do because they comfortable where they at and they don't have a will to do anything better like, thanks for letting me speak. Laugh, I yield the floor. Man, no, he preaching though. I swear, he be a whole different person. Well, no, but that you right about. That, I ain't think about it that way because I do usually say if you if you know better, you're gonna do better. You right, but that we do. I do forget that part that you gotta want to do better, right? It's it's that want word, right? A lot of people do be knowing. You right, because I've been learning. I think I learned this the past month, maybe. I'm, I just learned this like a month ago that people do be knowing. But they just don't want to do it or they ignore it or something like that. So you write about that. But that's why I be saying it's the difference between knowing and being aware. I think awareness when it, awareness gets so deep to even like even if you know awareness is like when you see how it's affecting you and when you're really aware of how these things that you so called know is really, you know, doing doing you in or how uh toxic it is for you how unhealthy it is for you you know what i'm saying so that's why i be telling like what awareness is a whole different thing when it comes but besides that so once you're aware of something that's when you really try to make change that's even with with this so-called thing with the, with the um emotional intelligence like to make any type of change you got to be aware of it first you can know it right but you got to be aware of it before you can you know make the next step you got to realize what things is happening to you and, you know, and you got to really want to. Yeah, I got to throw that in there. You got to really want to make that change after that. But, yeah, that's what it is for sure.
But you know what? We was talking about that police brutality part because this one the young girl brought up black men getting gunned down by the cops and all this shit. I was like, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's the young niggas getting gunned down because they stupid. Every man who is my age knows one thing, that there are unwritten rules when dealing with the police. And this is where street knowledge comes in. Now, see, you think you're street smart, but you're not. We all know that if you run from the police and they catch you, it's not written in department policy, but they're going to whoop your ass. But y'all don't, see, y'all don't see how this... Hold, like- hold on, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute, let me finish. We know this. Every man from the, every Gen X know this. We also know that there's a way that, that you that there's a way to talk to them, and you can go home. We also know two other. We also know a few key components. One, if you got warrants, the last thing you need to be doing is driving. Two, if you got warrants, the last thing you need to be driving is a car that the plates ain't right on it. Mm. So, when you doing dumb shit like that, and the police pull you over, and you escalate the shit because your ass ran because you ain't want to do a night in a in a fucking precinct. We knew, we knew better. We knew the worst he get is I'm going to jail tonight, and tomorrow I'm going to see a judge, and I'm going home. There was no need to run. There was no need to buckle down, talk shit if you want to. But in our generation, that shit was so minimal in certain pockets of the United States. NWA had to make a song about it because it was big in their area. But everywhere else, black men, people got the memo. We ain't scared of them at all. We just know it would be dumb to argue with a motherfucker who can blow your head away and get away with it on some BS. Worry. That's all. If you got bullshit warrants, you running for the police, tearing up the whole city because your punk ass don't want to sit a night in the precinct, nigga. You think I care what happened to you after that? You almost hit my daughter trying to get away because you wasn't even supposed to be in a fucking car in the first goddamn place with warrants. Well, you ain't got no daddy in your life or no real men in your life to tell you that type of shit. Dog, no, when you, you got warrants, if your boys got warrants, don't you be doing that. Don't you be in no car because you could, that's the, that's, you, you got a better chance of getting accosted by the police in the damn car. You know they gonna ask for everybody's shit when they pull you over. So why would you be in that car? But y'all let your mamas talk y'all or say something, whoever somebody told you something stupid and different. So now we see in these instances where these boys getting their heads took off by the police because they ran, they run it. They run it like the, like the cowards they are. Cowards. Scared to spend a night in not county, not J, not uh, prison, the precinct, the bullpen. I don't want to say that. Well, that can be true for like certain people. The police is there to arrest you and they're not there to be the executioner. And while there are unspoken rules, just like you said, it's not written in a policy, which means it's illegal. So they can only like kill you if their life is in danger. If you running away and they decide to kill you, then that's using excessive force. Under law, you gotta say under law. Oops, sorry. That's using mm. excessive force. And that's the problem. It's big everywhere. That's why NWA had to make a song about it. But that's not what I wanted to even get on. Because I noticed that a lot of, I'm not saying all, but I'm saying I've met a lot of older people that talk like that. And it's like they conform to how we get treated. And what I mean by conform is they don't really have a problem with it. They just move their life around it. Like y'all said, we can't fix what is going on. We can only like move on with our lives. But we are living in the, you know, effects of Jim Crow. Whether we believe it or not, or whether we- But you you know, you know what, 
you know what the older people in half a mile use the left three lanes to take ex whether or not Jim Crow is actually going on or we wasn't directly affected by it we still are living in an effects of it which is why a lot of bl black men are getting unalived like on a daily basis and that's the problem it's not that nobody wants to get up and do for themselves it's that we haven't even tried to fight the system you know what i'm saying we just living in a system and i guess like nobody cares enough to care about that so but we can't we can't enough to care about it but here's the thing i, I told you my second priority in life but i tell you my first priority my first priority in life is to make it home every night so we trying to avoid Thanks. the cops and the robbers Thanks. okay that that's what we trying to do that that's that's what gets us to this old age that's what gets us not being shot up to, by, by by a cop, cop that's scared pulling over a 24 year old on a traffic stop because we're trying to make it home to our families we're trying to still support the ones that we that we live we're not saying it's right we're not saying it's right but by, by one one iota but I, I'd rather be a, a, a live coward than a dead martyr. Facts. Facts. That's why I'm trying to tell people, but an ego, that's a problem nowadays. It'd be that ego. I don't think it's really ego. I think that a lot of... It's 100% ego. I think that a lot of people who were here before us, they had a lot more heart. Like, they cared more about um, the way we lived in this country than we do now. Because like the other dudes said, we're comfortable. And comfortable could mean like just choosing to be a victim or it can mean to be like, since we are, since we have our freedom now, we can go work. We okay with that. Even though we are being unalived at a large rate, even though a lot of us are being incarcerated, um, wrongfully incarcerated, even though a lot of us are being, I don't know if I could say kidnapped, kidnapped on a higher rate, even though like we are, being harmed in those ways you know even though be, just because we can go out and work and have our home and just take care of our families that's okay to us and so, so what, what's what's the alternative what's the alternative what do you want us to do what do i want y'all to do like as black men i think that y'all should care about the community more more than y'all like not even not, i'm not gonna say more than y'all families but i'm just saying like I think that y'all should think in a Let, let me ask you something. I, 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 I'm Hold something. on, wait, before you wait, say wait, that, wait, though. Wait, 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 before you go, wait. real quick, just real quick, real quick. So before, so what they just said, you don't think they care? I I don't think, I think. You think care. it's one way of caring about somebody? I think that they care about, I understand that they have their own families. But when it comes to thinking as a community, it's ways you can move. You can you can help the community and not put yourself in harm's way. Like y'all can create petitions. Y'all can go out and fight. Y'all can fight the punk. You, there's you can. You did so. You must you must didn't hear it because you were so fixed on saying oh man this or whatever something like that. Both both actually all three of the guys down here right. They literally said some legit stuff. They were just saying basically how to avoid it because so, we can't control other people right. We can't do it all the time, but to make to 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 basically avoid confrontation or keep our brothers from getting unalived and all that stuff, we got to check ourselves first. Because like he was just saying, we got to make it back home safe. It is cops that you saying that's out there. All that stuff we 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 recognize that. That's why we see it on TV and stuff. But us adding fire to fire, which I had a lot about that, it's not gonna make anything better. I would rather be here living another day. Like he said, I'd be a coward if I got to go make it back home the next day. But like I said, it's going to go back. It sounds like we about to tie back into the ego thing. And it's not all about that because you get your ego blew off by sitting there trying to focus on ego. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I get, I get yeah, that. Here's, 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 here's the truth. Hold on. Here's the truth. Unacceptable. Here's the truth. Listen, 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 listen. We worried about the cops more than we worried about our people killing us. Right. I mean, so, so, like I said, my first priority is make it home every night. So I'm trying to avoid the cops and the robbers. I'm not going in places where you niggers are at. 
because I don't know what you own. I didn't make this money to live in squalor. Now, I'm going to fight the fight from the suburbs. When you know better and you make more, you do better. Now, it is up to you as an individual to decide where you want to live and how you want to live. You're not going to tell me that, that the white man is holding you down and we had 9,000 uh, black on black unalivings last year. When we had 250 police shootings last year. So where is the issue? Where's the rage for that? Okay, and I think I I don't have to say the other thing in order for it to be valid. Of course, everything is important. Of course, the police shootings are important. Of course, the black people on um, black people unalive and is important. I don't have to say that for that to be true. What I'm saying is a lot of our people back then, we cared about each other on a community wide aspect, not just individual. Of course, they had to go back to their families too, you know, but they still, you know, put their foot down and was like, I'm going to do what's best for our, our community. You know what I'm saying? And that doesn't mean go and step in front of the bully if a person about to be on the live. It just means, you know, you could have stood there and talked to him, you know, or maybe you could have like made a petition or, you know, checked on him, something like that. But y'all choose to just always be, not always, y'all choose to be in favor of the persons that's doing the wrong instead of like your people. It's crazy how you put the person. I think, you set, I, think your, you, set I think you set your mind to only hear things from one way though. I'm no, noticing that though. Cause I that's why I haven't seen you. Have. I, I understand. I understand exactly what you saying. right now. What you're doing now is like a listening to respond thing. Because I noticed, like, because just like you're not getting the key thing that's being said right now. I am. You saying that somebody sided. I don't think not one person up here siding with, with the situation. Just because, just because we already said both of them things, it, it's, it's, it, it exists though. But at the end of the day, the root of it, we got to fix ourselves first. I don't know if you don't, if you get what I'm saying though. We know I things go down, but I, it's like okay. I'm putting. Let me use a better example. Maybe you can I understand this. No, well. you don't have to keep explaining. No, you know, you know, you don't because you keep saying that somebody don't care and all this stuff. But all everybody that's in this box do care. We've been saying stuff that cares, but you, I don't think you like the angle it is because it sounds like you want it to be in some type of more action or something like that. I don't know. No, I'm but I'm just saying that. Another yeah, way yeah, of yeah, this, this is more the same. This is more the same. This generation wants leadership, but don't want to accept the leadership. They don't want to accept what we're telling them that, that needs to be changed. They want to hear what they want to hear and blame somebody else for why they're not where they want to be. Mm. Look, go, go ahead, Wednesday. I know the, you want to say the, something. The, then I'm going to let you. Oh, my bad. The, oh, my bad. The, the best form of protection is prevention. Hey. <laughs> I be wish people could know that, I w but go ahead Wednesday. Then unalive. I, I mean, I keep on <laughs> unalive because it say uh, UNA uh, unavailable uh, or unacceptable. Uh, my bad. Thank I'm gonna let. You. I know you want to say something. But go ahead Wednesday. So I'm gonna give a scenario. This is a real life scenario that I see every day, and I want I want to ask Black Chicago, but I want it unacceptable to respond to what she thinks that she hears me say. I work in a high school the 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 population of students is majority black and hispanic you have to look for the yts okay every time there's a fight it's us the hispanic students do not fight each other at school not one this year has mm -hmm. happened with the hispanic students right so what i would like to know is what what are your thoughts on that and the reason i asked that question is because there's always, you know, we're older people. We don't listen. The younger generation, they are as where, they're where it's at. They're the future and this, that, and the other. So I would like to know what you think about that. Because when I see it every day, all the, the all of us getting suspended from school. And, and this is another thing. Just last week at dismissal, seven fights broke out within a 30-minute time span. Three, four different agencies had to respond. What really got me was, listen to this, I looked and saw two law enforcement officers with one student. 
This dude, this little boy jumped on them. I watched multiple students jump on law enforcement. It blew my mind. Somebody explain what's going on. There was no fear. I, 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 you know, I got one question for you, Wednesday. Please, please. And please don't take this as an attack. Take it as a fact. Okay. A sure. fact finding sure. mission. A fact finding mission. Out of all of those students that were fighting, those seven skirmishes, how many of them had two parents in a household? Well, that I don't know. So I don't want, I can't go that deep because I don't know. I don't know the answer yeah, to that question. Deep. I can't go deep with that. Well, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I, if you don't mind, Black, uh, can we stay on the surface? Because, and I get that, all of those things. Okay, right, right, okay. But I was really like, I was addressing you because I really wanted to ask her that question, but I, 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 want, I didn't want there to be conflict. So I figured if I address you, it'd be okay. <laughs> okay. This is this, where we at. This is where we at. This is where we at. And this, I've been saying this for the last 40 years. I'm 60 now. I, I've said for years, we are not going to get together as a people until we get together in our families. We learn this shit at home. We learn this shit at home. Uh -huh. We 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 do not we we do not know how to come together or work together because our families are dysfunctional. We are dysfunctional. But we have to also look at why we're dysfunctional. We can't use our dysfunctionality as an excuse. You have to accept that, that we're dysfunctional and then try to make a change. Until we can accept the dysfunctionality of us as the people, we'll never change. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna let you, uh, I think you wanted to say something unavailable then codify about the, uh, the talk after that. Well, I agree. But did you understand anything out of that? Under, under? Yeah, I'm not slow. Like, I agree with the first guy. He's, Nobody was saying that. He's he had to take offense to it. Also, if we're talking about the school aspect, I went to a school just like that. Um, and uh, one of the problems that they had in the school, because, yes, it's the kids, but you have to have a certain type of structure when dealing with teenagers. Like, majority of them already learn how to think on their own and they're doing it the way they want to do it because nobody ever guided them in the right way so one of the problems that was in that school that i went to that was exactly like that hispanic and black was they cared more about dress code and what somebody wore than the actual teaching and you know they never had like classes to where you can talk and debate and learn how to if it come how can i say this they never had classes to where you were taught how to communicate effectively if you know what i'm saying but they they had like they, do you think i had but that's the that's things that they didn't have like they cared more about dress code and stuff and and especially more than actually teaching the students and then the way they taught the students wasn't really a good way of teaching too because i went to a school like that and i also went to uh like a white school so i saw the difference between how mm. the teachers taught at that school and how the teachers how old are you by the way because i heard you say something about older men and all that how old are you by the way i don't like to give people my age because i've been on a couple lives and they tend to use my age against me and say that i'm a child and i'm young and that i don't know what i'm talking because about i'm only saying that because you just called you just said a bunch of old men and something like that so i wanted to see how old you were like said you said that because everybody's it's objective i said a lot of older because you literally just did what they did you, i'm just asking you now okay i don't i don't, but, but, I don't the thing, but, but the thing but, but the thing i want you to understand is what i said when i first came into kev's line it's about personal accountability and, and, and responsibility. As long as we continue to blame something or someone for where we are at or where we're not, we will always fail until you can say that it's because I made the choice to do it and I'm living with it, then you, 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 you're, you're never gonna grow. We don't make mistakes. We make choices, good, bad, or indifferent. Live with them. But go, I'm sorry, but go let it get it. Yeah, but we're talking about teenagers. We're talking about young adults.
they they are not even grown yet. They're under the age of 18. They're in high school. So oh, at this point, Jesus. at this point, they're looking, they need, well, they need adults in their lives. They need people to lead them and teach them, you know, how to act. I had a mentor. I had a mentor in high school and she mentored me all the way to when I got to college. So she was a big and I had another mentor because I used to go to like the centers around the neighborhood and this was an older guy. They both mentored me until I got to college and they were one of the reasons why like I even started to think differently anyway. So that's what a lot of teenagers need leadership. They need somebody to sit to, and talk to them and not point the finger at them and make them feel like, you know, they're just a burden, even though they might, even though they do have a choice whether to act out or not. You got to remember they're acting out of trauma. Like you said, they mm -hmm. don't have a mom and dad at home, or maybe they just got one mom. I mean, one a mom or just a dad. You never know what's happening at home. Maybe somebody's getting touched on. You never know. So when you are dealing with kids, you have to approach them in a way to where they don't feel attacked. And that's what I'm getting at. The Hispanic kids at that school might not have been fighting, but again, there were more black kids in that school than Hispanic. So of course, if we're talking about proximity, they are going to be the ones that get into it. I didn't when say I, there were more black than Hispanic. I said that black and Hispanic are the majority. It's it's an equal amount. Mm. And I also want to let you know that like one of the things that I always hear you do is you put out what seems to be statistics, but they're really not like you like you said, um, dress code because they have a dress code. Well, the county that I work in years ago, the state removed the dress code so that the kids could focus and the adults could focus on their quote unquote education and not worry so much about their clothes. So there is no dress code and the teachers aren't involved in the choices that they're making with these fights. They're fighting because they're beefing with somebody in their neighborhood and they bring it to school. Mm. So, so you can't really like, so you're, you're, you're blaming other people for their, their behavior. I never blamed anybody. Though. You, you literally blame dress code. You blame the way we talk to the kids. You blame the fact the environment. That, right. Yes. You 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 named a list of things Lots that is the reason parity. what could be the reason. That's what I. You didn't listen to what I said. I did I hear that you. I did. The I did. And just because there's no uniform doesn't mean that there's not a dress code. Do you guys literally have a dress code where they? I can just wear told you that, that everything there is that an article in the newspaper my school, where the state we announced didn't have uniform, that they're removing the dress, dress code, code so that their Girls outfits will not be focused on. I just straps. said they that. They wear short shorts. Did you hear anybody? You, you, you told Kevin. Hold up, hold up, hold up, real quick. Hold up, hold up, real quick. Uh. Is you hearing anything? Uh, un I keep forgetting your name, man. Un unaccepted, because I can tell you your name is really, really starting to show though. It seems like you're not trying to accept anything that's being said because it ain't coming the way you want it to though. So if this was her her example that she gave you, how you gonna tell her about her example? I'm not. At the end of the day, you was wrong. I'm not telling. What I'm saying is, I gave her my answer. She asked me. I gave her my answer based on what I live going to a school just like that. If you didn't like what and I said. And she told you it wasn't like that, but then you still trying to push your narrative in it because you're not trying to accept. I see why your name is unacceptable. You're not trying to accept what she's saying because you don't like what's being said. I you said. already made a couple of assumptions that was not true because she said it was a mixed thing and you said it was, well, because of the black thing and it might be this, whatever. I mean, I feel that though, but then she said that's basically like making an excuse because of that situation when she just said it was mixed up. It's not an excuse. Well, now I know that. I know she asked for my answer, and that's what I gave her. So now you're saying I said what I said. Like, that was my answer. I went to school like Nobody's mad. Nobody's mad. We're not mad. We're not mad at all. We're just trying to understand each other. But you're talking about, I see why your name is unacceptable. Like, what? But you're mad. But it's unacceptable. You're saying that there's a problem with the dress code where girls can't wear short shorts, crop tops, spaghetti strap stuff. Uh, That's you know. a dress code, yes. That's so there's a problem code. with that? I so never you see said. a problem Why with that? Y'all not listening to me and y'all trying to make it seem We're like listening, listening to you, but I mean, but you, you brought that up. You, brought, <laughs> you think everything so you is a up. You brought that up as a point. Let me you reset it make, you, you brought that. You brought, the, you brought that dress code up as a point of contention. So my question is, why is that a point of contention if it if that's not what you're trying to, to state? 
because I said a lot of the times there are dress codes. She said we don't have any dress codes, but that's the difference between uniform and dress code. Y'all might don't not have, have a dress uniform. code. You can wear t straps. You can wear booty shorts. <laughs> okay, wear that's what I asked. That's what I no, asked. You that's what she it. said, but you told it out. That's what I'm saying. You literally listen to respond because you're not hearing it the way you wanted to hear it. She we literally just gave you the answer to all the stuff you just said. No, I'm saying there's a difference between wearing uniform, which is the button-up shirts, khaki pants, black pants. We're not talking about that. You talk about something that's else. You just want to put your point across so bad. That's what what is going asking. on? We're not talking about that. What are you talking about? That's to, what I was need asking. To be right. Need, to be right. need to be right. Unacceptable. Bro. Unacceptable. Bro. I that's what I asked. Unacceptable. Listen, listen, baby girl. Stop, I, bro. And now y'all talking to me okay, like I'm Okay, but just, listen. I'm, I'm trying to talk to you. I'm going to mute after this. Listen to me very carefully. When you mentioned that the dress code may be a problem and that's why they do this, I said to you, there is no dress code. That means that they can wear whatever they want to wear. They, they, it, is, it is a statewide mandate that we are no longer allowed to say anything about the way the kids dress. Now, everybody doesn't agree with it, but that's what it is right now. They can wear spaghetti straps, short shorts, booty shorts, holes. They can come with one leg. They can come to school dressed any way they want to. That's all I was, when you said, that, when I say no dress code, I mean, there is no dress code. Okay. So, I have nothing to say then. That's what I was asking though. But y'all make it see what she just said. Okay. But I gave you my, gave you my, that was my answer. I went to a school like that. That's what I gave you based off what I went to. Okay. Yeah. You went, you went, you got it. In my 12 years of schooling when I was a kid, yes, sir. 12, from first grade, to 12th grade and I left 8th grade reading at the uh, Iowa basic school skills math was 12.5 uh, reading was 12.6 okay but in my 12 years of schooling I can't recall seven fights in 12 years you had seven fights in one day in 30 minutes I couldn't, and, I and, 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 and nobody sees a problem with that and let me tell you something else too, Black. What was really amazing to me, it took me a while to even get to be able to get out of the building to get to my car. Um, there was a, a, an officer that was moving a girl to safety. She was she had separated these two girls and she was moving one away as, and she was walking away from the building and another, the girl that was fighting her earlier ran up and jumped behind the officer to get the girl while she was in her possession or in her care. And the lady pushed her back. The officer pushed her back and told her to stop that girl kept coming and it three times that lady had to stop and turn around and face her but what really threw me off is the fact that these are like we talk about you know police brutality and how you know how and and we are really like running up on officers like with no sh and i'm gonna tell you something else too black in the state that i live in where I am, if you're under, if you're six, if you're not 18, if you're under 18, they can't arrest you. And that's what they're using now is these young cats to go out here and, and steal cars and stuff because they know they ain't going to jail. It got to be a gross violation. They know they ain't going to jail and they're, they're out of control. We can't support them because they, you can't say anything to them without them telling you to shut the F up. They'll walk past you and cuss. You know what I'm saying? And I went to high school, and I never acted that way. And I never blamed anybody mm. for my actions if I if I did right. something. Mm. All right. So I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Codify go because he he been trying to go for a minute. Before he go though, uh, while it's 33 people in here, if y'all can share to at least like 10 people for me, five people if y'all just really lazy with it, share the share the five to 10 people real quick for me, and try to give me the 10k because it's like 34 people in here now. And uh, go ahead, codify. Okay. Um, yeah, that's right. Tap the screen. And for the people on the panel, uh, hashtag F FYP in the comments. and may get them out there. Um, I'm going to say this. We have a lot of problems that we need to solve. And this is for the ones who are, are actively trying to do it. The one thing that I know for sure to solve these problems is that we need to be alive to do it. So getting clarity will be one way of reducing the chances of you being unalived. 
like how you deal with law enforcement and anybody in general on the street because there's a misconception that police don't lie a traffic stop is not an arrest the word detain and arrest is the same it has the same meaning so when you get a traffic stop you are under arrest means that you need to know which constitutional protections that you need to invoke and one of the ways I do that is I did three things I taught myself how to shut up try shutting up for 24 hours don't everything you communicate is through writing and that when I say shut up that means your face also your nonverbal your hand gestures your body language try to shut that up for 24 hours don't try to avoid people throughout the day do your regular day the only three exceptions are emergencies children that can't read and you handling your business to maintain your quality of life anything outside of that get a notepad and a pencil if somebody asks you a question write down the answer number two is etymology we have to know the true sense of words. Etymology is the study of the true sense of words. This is for effective communication. If you have ineffective, because we communicate, communicating is not the problem. We communicate. It's just very ineffective. Everybody have this, this dictionary that they only have in their head for words that they hear. And the third thing I do for clarity is know the difference between me and everybody else. And this will lead you to the difference between um, uh, um, a lot of other things. And saying that, I want to bring it to you. Got to know the difference between a community and a neighborhood. A neighborhood is just having some, like a black community. Having your neighbor being black is a black neighborhood. The word community means to have something in common which means that you have sat down with somebody and, and said like what's on my list we won't name call each other we won't steal from each other we won't gossip about each other we won't curse each other and, and we will be courteous to each other write these things down and sign your name to it have weekly or bi-weekly or monthly meetings on it to keep it fresh on your mind and this all school can't apply to you and your students, ma'am. I know the school has their policy, but if what you do does not violate what they have in their policy, you can do it with your students. You could put that first day of class or any time and say, if you do these things, if you do your best to do these things and we meet for an hour and discuss these things, you will be able to call me. And if you have a problem with somebody and you abide by these rules, I will wake up out of my sleep and come, and come and assist you or at my earliest convenience. This is how you put your energy towards something that you know that, that you're helping somebody who is behaving in a particular manner. Another thing, um, I promote home birth, home school, and extreme. Well, that's, that's a different subject. That's, that's something else, but those things are important. But having standards and principles structure and order and a code of conduct it's critical to us having this black community if i could i will let you in my house if you can guarantee that you will not do those things to me matter of fact if you can't guarantee that you won't do those things i can, i don't want you around me when i leave my house i got a body cam a body body armor a taser and something else that looks like a taser because I don't talk to strangers and I know anything like like brother said I'm looking out for the cops and the robbers and these people who, who lack self-control you know we we gotta stop playing with this the, we, we know the solutions what we need to do is execute 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 we don't want to put boots on the ground and actually sit down face to face and put some work in. Intentionally have these discussions. Just don't assume that we know what we're talking about because we have melanin in our skin and we go through similar things. We have to intentionally meet up with each other. I don't care if it's a conference call, Zoom, or face to face. 
We have to intentionally have these conversations about how we're going to behave towards each other. Cursing, that destroys effective communication. Name calling, that causes fights and squabbling to happen. Being discourteous, that cuts us off when we're trying to make a point. We can't even get it all out where your question may be answered. But because we were triggered, let me tell you which teaching yourself how to shut up will teach you how to control yourself when you're triggered. The difference between emotional intelligence and emotional maturity is that intelligence is just knowing something. Maturity is action. You can know everything about emotions and feelings, but actually putting it into practice is wisdom. Wisdom and maturity is synonymous. See, we, we got to stop playing. Etymology would teach you the true meaning of these words. And with that, you know what, man? I can't give up on us. We, we have too much work to do. Um, I don't really like to run with stats, but because we don't do anything to come up with our own stats and black demographics, they use the stats that they, they get that stuff from the others. From what they say, we, we just we just above 12 percent. 12 percent of anything is endangered and nobody is 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 actively doing anything to preserve us not even us we can't even make children effectively we need mentally sound children it's a reason why we complain about pookie pookisha ray ray and rayisha because we have not we have not came up with anything to separate us or bring us together and try to protect them from even being in a condition where they become these people that can't be trusted. Structure and order, principles and standards, code of conduct, and actually boots on the ground, execute, execute, execute. We are not in a time of peace. The difference between a slave and a prisoner of war, let me say this, this may be critical. A slave is somebody who owes a debt and they're put inside of captivity to work that debt off. This is why they have inmates working. A prisoner of war don't owe a debt. That means I came to your house, kicked in the door and took your house over and I can stay there as long as I want because there's nothing for you to work off. Doesn't that sound like what happened to us? in quote unquote slavery generation after generation after generation we was held in captivity after seven to ten years an actual slave was released and actually given something to get themselves going in this society we got to know the difference between us and everything else and and we'll know the difference between other things when we say these words it's out there for us to get and I really hope somebody screen recorded this or y'all was taking notes because I'm telling y'all this from what I know. I've done this. It's, it's nothing that I think or I believe in because the root word to believe is lie. It's right in the middle. So, like I said, man, protect your melanin. Thank you for letting me speak. Laugh. I yield the floor. What happened? Chase Fuller? He was supposed to win next. Uh, I guess whoever want to go next, I guess. Uh, Y'all want to talk about the topic or what uh, ads oh, okay. or what I was talking about? Who was that talking? <laughs> Codify, you want to go next? Oh, no, that was me that just gave my screen. I'm, I mean, if you have any questions okay. for me, I'm right here. Laugh was asking who wanted to go next or speak on the topic. Oh, my bad. I had a, a, a text message. But um, I, I was just listening in earlier 
um, when what was being said about, um, you know, what the young lady was saying and what Wednesday was saying. Um, when we have these discussions, you know, on these platforms with different um, generations, we seem to, what I seem to notice is there's always a, a, a struggle for the younger to overpower the older. And there's literally no kind of it's like we get on here and like we all talk, we don't know each other, we don't know each other ages or whatever. I think it's best to know those things though, Kevin, because I believe, and I know Codify and Kevin would agree with me, I believe in still having respect for people who are older. And I believe in younger people being respectful and I believe in older people being respectful. I had these two young ladies on my platform yesterday doing the exact same thing. It's for this, it's like this push and we need to talk about it because there is a difference between, you know, the generations. But that doesn't mean that the older generations are out of touch or don't understand. And that doesn't mean that the younger people don't know what they're talking about. I think it's the delivery and I think it's the tone or just not even the delivery of the tone, it's the respect level in my opinion, that we need to be cognizant of on these, uh, on these uh, uh, platforms, uh, talking to one another. And I know for me, when I run my live, I still look at us, our people as a community. I still look at the hierarchy and I still look at if I'm younger, and there's a 50 year old person up on that platform, I'm not about to talk crazy. I'm not about to go back and forth. I'm not gonna act a fool. I'm a yield. And I don't understand how come we losing that. This is what we gotta start looking at. I don't know if it matters on social media, but it's gonna matter on my platform. Because I, I, I believe, I still believe in the Most High. And I believe that the Most High says, when you disrespect your elders, you gonna have problems. And I'm not, I'm not the one that have problems with the most high, okay? You see things affecting your life. You see things going a certain way. Well, there's certain things that we do that are spiritual laws that we break and that we don't understand. And this part of it comes from the disrespect. And that's what, that, that's what I wanted to chime in on when the young lady was speaking and going back and forth for Wednesday. You know, when they was not being disrespectful, she wasn't being, she was just talking. And then it's like, oh, I'm saying this, I'm saying that, I didn't say that. And you yelling and you hollering over a woman that's probably twice your age. You know? What? Yeah. So it matters. And I know that's not the topic, but I just wanted to say that. You got to get, you got to understand that if we're going to form a community, and if we're going to be respectful to one another, you know, I can see if I'm, it's a peer, you know what I'm saying? But when you know it's not your peer, you need to learn how to yield and humble. We all need to do that, even myself. So I know that's not the topic, Kevin, but that's what I wanted to say with regards to the platforms, having level of respect for the elders, the younger people having respect for the elders. I'm still young myself, you know? Not as young as a young lady that was speaking, but I am still young and I still honor and respect people who are older than me. You don't be cussing, you know, not cussing, but just like going back and forth and yelling and talking over. That's disrespectful. You gotta learn, you gotta learn your place, you gotta learn your position, and then you'll get the respect that you're looking for. Because you know what? The older people, they've been here longer and they've been seeing things and doing things a lot longer than you have. And so we have to remember that and learn how to get your blessings by being a respectful young lady, a respectful young man, respectful older man, a respected, a respected older woman. So I just think that we need to get a hold of community like that if we plan to um, hear one another out 
and have change come to our community the way we need it to come to our community. Not gonna work when you, cause I can tell you right now, you don't play that, 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 that arguing with young folk and all that the old folk don't play that. And young folk want to be heard. But if you want to be heard, you gotta, we gotta learn how to humble ourselves to be heard. You just have to do that. You just have to. There's no getting, there's no getting, there's no getting around it. You have to do it. And we have to hear you out. And we want to hear you out. But there's no hearing when there's an attempt to, you know, be combative and be disrespectful in a sense. You know what I'm saying? Not to say that you were trying to, but I hear it. And I love young people. I have a 17 year old son, but my 17 year old son would never come on a platform and talk to older people like that or talk in the midst of, of, of an older crowd like that. I just think the respect that we need to come back, back on both sides. That's just my, my thoughts and my opinion. Okay. I want to. Thank you. Respect That's all I want to say. I don't really need no, I really don't need no combat. Yeah, I'm not talking for that. I yeah, wasn't I don't, talking. I don't need no cut. Okay. Uh, okay. But I do good. want to say but, that but respect I'm is not a finished though. Oh, I'm I not talk, I'm not finished. Mind. I'm not even finished. And, and what you about to say though, I already said that. I see older people and younger people. I just want to speak That's in behalf of younger people. And, yeah. But I already spoke on that. What I'm saying is I already said what you're getting ready to say. I, I want to speak on behalf of younger people though. You see what I'm saying? The 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 willing to be to, to yield when somebody else is talking. You know, you wanted me to react. react. That's why you brought me up. I didn't want you to react. Oh, so no, your whole rant. No, I, didn't, was about I me. didn't. Your whole rant was about me. You wanted me to respond. So I want to speak on behalf of young people when you're finished. First of all, somebody asked for your response. I'm talking in general. But I'm also addressing some things that you were saying. So I'm addressing what you were saying, not addressing you. There's a difference. And what I'm doing is setting order because this is the same kind of attitude that I have encountered last night. Same kind of attitude. Nobody talking to you. You're what talking about is I've already, don't matter. I'm talking about what you said. Which is probably why the other Kevin, person I'm about to, to I'm about I'm about to I'm about to let her go. Because this is the kind of attitude and this is the kind of stuff that we gotta deal with when they are in spaces with people who's trying to give them a voice to talk. She's already ready to jump off and say, you wanted me to respond. I hey, didn't say I wanted name? anybody to respond. What's I'm talking name? to Kevin. That's his name, I'm talking Kevin? To Kevin. Yeah. So look, this was about to happen because yeah, this my yeah, this she won she my main moderator though. So just just listen to her, give her a chance to say what she say, and then you talk after that. You get your chance though. But I I don't think she's saying any of this stuff to just attack you that's a, that's what i'm saying we was mentioning that about earlier you taking taking things as an attack and it's not but just All listen person. to her real quick let her finish and then you can say your part after that and see what you got out of it because it ain't no back and forth thing we this live is for us to all understand one another that's all it is right and so that and if she boots you that's you that's on you though because that's she my main mind and stuff so uh yeah yeah because it's it's the it's already the passive aggressiveness is already there that's not what this is about. I'm talking about our community and how we deal with one another, young people and older people. I have already said what she's getting ready to say. I already said that. I said older people, I said younger people. Well, it's like, That's I'm both not sides. speaking to you, I'm That's speaking both. to the comments. It's like, I can't say anything without anybody trying to put my emotions on me. I'm, I don't feel any type I don't, of I don't, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. What I wasn't, I, I'm not, I just said I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to the lady in the comments. Can I ask you oh, something? Okay. Can I interrupt and say something unacceptable? The thing that you don't realize and understand is that you have a lot to offer these conversations, but your attitude kind of overshadows what you're trying to say. I've seen you in other lives and you're very, very combative. You, you, you have a tone and instead of you like, don't be upset with me for saying this, like I'm trying to bring something to your attention because a lot of times we do things that we're not aware of that we're doing. So I'm I'm telling you, Auntie to niece or whatever kind of way you want to look no, at it. You not older, me. but but you, you you get my point. Yeah, like you like you're ready to fight the world. 
you have so much to offer, but you are ready to fight the world. And you you said that teachers don't take time to talk to students. Well, we're trying to talk to you and, and you're angry. And you, you mm -hmm. gotta just tone it down a little. It's not a bad thing. Okay, well, can I say something? I understand that y'all might think that I'm, I have an attitude and I'm upset, but I'm not. I genuinely don't feel anything right now, but I don't like how any time I have a thing I have to say, somebody else has something to do with condescending towards me. Somebody's music playing loud. Somebody got to mute up. I can't even hear her. But what I was saying was, I think I get, I know that y'all might think that I have an attitude or that I feel some type of way towards y'all when I don't. I literally feel nothing. I just don't like when I have something I have to say and then I have other people try to like misconstrue what I say. Also, she made her whole speech according to what I said and it was it was condescending and passive aggressive, whether she thinks it was or not it was. Plus, I've been shaded three times you by you when you said that um you you said something along the lines of you do things without trying to justify what you're doing or something like that but it was a shade towards me but you take it, everything as shade and it's not construction can i finish i'll let you finish i'll let you finish just let me finish I, I, you know what I, I i'm gonna try to exercise respect but you're not being you're being disingenuous because first of all you're lying every time you open your mouth to I'm say not lying. you why, are i don't know you why would i get sweetie, up here and lie listen when you talk when you talk about Cody how you have been treated on this app or how you you've been but I didn't say anything shady to you. We're having a we're having a mature you did. conversation. You didn't notice it. Why is did. it that when people All speak three of to you, you think it's personal? That sounds like something that you might want to look into because it's in not conversations. Those, now you're oh, who the who the three people unacceptable? That's Cody, all the so called attacks. He said something along the lines of he don't make up his own statistics like some people do. That was shade because Wednesday said I made my own statistics. Wednesday, okay, well. Wednesday said something, but I know what the part I heard was along the lines of she doesn't try to justify what she does when she helps the students, and even when she's in a wrong along the lines of that. And then this what? third lady, yes, you did. You don't remember? Say it again, it, baby. You, say it again. Make, wait, wait, wait. When say you were again. talking about when you were talking about the students, you said something along the lines of, and you don't try to justify what you're doing if you're in the wrong. Blase, blase. That's well, what, what you said. I, that didn't even make sense because I don't know what that means. What you just said. I'm just trying to understand what I you're just, saying. You were speaking about but, the children, but, but you don't feel you anything. The third person. You don't feel you don't feel anything. Oh my God! The third person was this. But lady you don't feel anything. Her whole rant. Her heart is beating a thousand miles a minute right I'm now. I'm saying I don't have anything towards y'all. I just realized that I was being shaded. But now that I'm saying something about it, you I have, have an attitude, sweetie. I don't. You are don't. mad. Look, look, you that's look, you get a mirror. Go thing. to your nearest mirror and I look have a mirror, it. baby. It's one right in front but of me. You're but y'all think that I deserve respect just because y'all older. I'm not angry. You're disrespectful. You're, you're my getting, emotions you're, you're, to me. You're, the response exactly that you're getting I said that is I a response to. to your absolute disrespect uh, in this line. It's not because I never all right, so, anybody. So let her all right. We gonna I'll okay, here we go. Just let her let her get it all out because it's obvious something that's going on. So what what's the what's the deal? Are you here to what to defend yourself or you trying to no, Give me a I second, real quick. I had actual things to say along the line. So why are you mentioning all these things that you're saying is so-called shade? You because taking it as I shade? I don't get what the problem is. Because I am going to acknowledge the fact that I was being shaded. I'm not going to just. Oh, know okay, it. it is what it is. There's nothing you can do about it or not. So the said, thing is, is you here to try to understand something, or you just go on live just to sit here and just combat people and stuff because was, you feel I'm a certain way that you said you don't feel. This is I had things to say, but every time I said just say what you gonna say because whatever you saying it's not gonna make nobody change their mind about what they think about you. So I just say what you about to say. I don't care. You do I care because you broke it up. You're not making no sense. You contradicting yourself. How I let y'all? I said I was being shady. I acknowledge that. Okay, whatever. It is what it is. It's nothing you can do about it. So all right, people, whatever. That's how you took it. So what is your whole purpose? What's your purpose? Hold up real quick. What is your purpose? I was here to speak on behalf of young people and how we think. Y'all Okay, like not, not speak, speak on that. Speak on that then. Just do that. that I said. Y'all didn't take it in consideration if y'all Just really speak on that. that. Just I hey look, I just speak on that. You keep talking about everybody else. Speak on your behalf. I am. I am. Y'all shot everything I had to say down. Are you still saying y'all say something what up? All right.
I'm giving you a chance. I'm trying to give you a chance. Speak on your behalf and stop talking about everybody else. Okay, a lot of older people, when I speak of older people, I mean the generation before me. Y'all like to think that just because y'all older, that y'all have all the wisdom in the world. And that's not true because I have gotten advice from people and they steered me the wrong way because they did not know. They were only acting how they were acting in their day. This day and age is very different. There are different ways that you can move around in 2023. You, there... When it comes to respect, the young people today, whether y'all like it or not, are not going to give you respect just because you're older. You have to earn their respect just like they have to earn yours. Y'all don't like it when we speak our mind. Y'all don't like it when we think for ourselves. That's the problem. It's going to happen regardless. You have to be able to know how to talk to a young person and guide their way of thinking instead of trying to change it for them. Stop thinking that Stop we're thinking just young. That Stop thinking that we're just young and naive and that we don't know what we're talking about because a lot of kids today have plenty of books to read in their hand. So trust me when we say we know about the topics that we talk about. Y'all are trying to work with younger people. All right, you can go ahead, but I need everybody to me. I'm just trying to get her to hurt and finish this real quick, man. Well, she's been talking long enough. Let somebody else. Know. I don't care. Goodbye. Hold on. I, I mean, just I yeah. She she about to do it. This, I'm just, I'm just trying to get her all this stuff out of her system real quick, so we can so she can get her point across, so she can't say nobody didn't let her talk. I think that y'all right because y'all older. That's not how it's going to work. I, I hope that what y'all doing now is working got for y'all. Goodbye. In the first place. All young people are not like her. Okay. Thank goodness. I work Absolutely with not. And all of them are not like that. <laughs> she already got on her plane. If you don't Please. like me, F, F you. So, I mean, no. she, she already okay. has a bad approach. But this, my, my this, intent, this, this my intent, thing. hold on one second. Wait, my, my intent was not for that. All right, Jackie, I'm going to get on up out of here. All right. My intent was not for that. What I'm trying to, all right, you have a good one, okay? Thank you. All right, take care. God bless. So my intent was not to, you know, I'm pointing out what I see on the platform between between younger people and older people. I just come from a generation where we just had a level of respect. And I don't see that with this generation. When you come on my platform, it don't have to be Kevin's platform, but I do have a level of respect and order for when they do come. If somebody is sick, Greg is Greg is 60 years old. When he come on my platform, he's probably the oldest person on that platform. When always father comes on the platform, that man is 80 years old. Do you think it, it would be conducive for a younger person to come on and talk to a older person like that? It's like we're we're losing the fiber, we're losing the respect level. That's all I'm trying to say. These young people want to tell us or tell older people how they're supposed to talk and how they're supposed to be. I, I understand that. There are some older people that feel like, well, just because I'm older, I'm going to tell you what to do, and you're not going to say nothing back to me. That's not what I'm talking about because I have a 17-year-old and I have to know how to talk to him and I give him a voice. He has a voice. As a matter of fact, Kevin, because he is a young man, guess who has to decrease now? His mother. I have to allow him to be the man that I want him to be. I can't browbeat him. I can't beat him down. I can't tell him, you know, you go do it my way. I have to step back as a mother. I have to step back and let him, let me see what I put in him come forth. Let me see what he's working with. But it's the smart mouth. It is the, it's the smart mouth and being triggered over nothing. Because what they're trying to do is say, I'm young and you're going to listen to me and you ain't going to talk to me. Nobody's saying that. Nobody's saying that. We're simply saying we need to have a level of respect in the community if we're going to go forward, whether it's older or younger. That's what I said. But the way that the delivery is going forward is not respectful. It's not. Now, I'm passionate right now, but I'm not going off on Wednesday or, or going off on Kevin or going off. I'm not doing that. You lack understanding. And see, sometimes we do need to be quiet so we can learn 
because sometimes we just don't know. Your mouth is running more than your ears is listening. I had to listen for years until I opened my mouth to people who were wiser than me, who have been, if Dwayne come up here right now, he is a financial specialist or, or well, y'all know what Dwayne is. Okay, I don't know his title, but you know who he is. Now, would it be who, would, would, it, would, would it look right if he came up here and me trying to tell him what to do with some money? And I'm going off you, 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 just because you've been in the business for 40 years don't mean nothing. I know this, 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 and that. <laughs> it don't work. Ah! He, it, 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 it doesn't work. So that's all I wanted to say. All I'm saying is there is no disconnect. There's no disconnect. What, what, what's happening is, Kevin, is that Younger people are trying to tell us, you going to shut up and listen to me because you don't know everything. And just because you older don't mean nothing. They're telling us that. And we don't react very well to that. Am I lying? We don't react very I, well to that. I feel you. I feel you. And, and, uh, and, and, that, and, that's, and, that, and, and that's the spirit of it. So I ain't going to say nothing else. I'm done. And yeah, I feel you on that, but I like I'm a fair type thinker and stuff, and I have noticed it is. It, I mean, it's some older people you can't talk to either, though. It, it just be like I think I both of us got sides. to learn to try to uh, hear sides. each other out because I said both sides. That's why I said. Yeah, I know you did. I know you did. I was just trying to emphasize it. And, 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 yeah. Huh? But, but 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 Kevin, but here's the thing. Go ahead, sir. Can I speak really fast? Hi, everyone. Who is that? Oh, go ahead, uh, John. Go ahead. Um. Well. First of all, she said the generation before hers, right? What is that noise? Um, she said the generation before hers, meaning she's getting all of this concerning her parents, the people around her parents, what her mother has done, things of that nature, right? And I'm going to say it straight. A lot of the children that are growing up do not respect us because at the end of the day, look at our generation, that has given birth to these children that are out right now that are no longer children some of them are 18 and 19 years old and unfortunately they are responding to a great deal of hurt because that's what we place within the community just like the generation that raised me and the generation that was silent for my mother you know what i'm saying so we have to look at you know where is the disconnect when it comes down to communication because i have no problem communicating with the kids that are outside uh, my own household but when it comes down to it, when they do get into these conversations and they are deep about it, they do feel like they don't have a voice. So if respect is given, yes. Well, we're not responsible given. for how you feel. Is it being let, let done? Speak. I know, but I'm just saying we're not responsible for how you feel. You have to learn how to control that. Your feelings they to come to into a conversation. Miss Kanai, they have to get to that point. Some adults our age are not at that point yet because they don't have a good example. And from our generation that raised these children, we were not good examples because okay. we didn't have a good example. I, I, I understand that. That's, that's the, I, I understand that. I'm just saying from a perspective of... Perspective of, of, of but but, but it still comes back to blaming, blaming family, blaming parents. When are adults going to take accountability for where they're at, what they feel, and how they respond to things? That's the part. I mean, because here it is, we're talking about, is the world better today with all the technology we have in terms of family or community in 2023 versus what it was in 1963 or 73? That, that's my point. Do you see more love in our community, more respect in our community? I mean, based on based upon what we're talking about. I mean, because we are still, we are still a, a, a culture that wants to blame everything on everybody else, and exactly. we haven't done any any work for self, not for anybody else, but for self. My question to anybody: Why do you want to live with the pain of what you didn't learn or what you didn't get as an adult? Well, I think so that ties into really questions. It, it ties into can I, can I, about finding yourself. Really quick? 
um, just one second, please. Um, I just want to make a quick response okay. really fast. Um, that ties into the questions um, about finding yourself. You have to find yourself mm -hmm. by yourself. And a lot of adults, <clears throat> even though they're young adults, they have not found themselves yet because they are now learning what we are, we now know, which is accountability. There's a lot of people in general that do not know how to take accountability, no matter what age they are. Age they, but we're the telling them this, and you're not rejecting it. Though, even though we, we are telling them this. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hey, hold on. Let, let her finish real quick. Just let her finish real quick. Tell somebody anything. It could be crammed into somebody's mind over and over again. The thing is, taking accountability causes you to have to stay by yourself and be by yourself and know what you're fixing. So in order to find yourself, you have to know who you are. A lot of young people do not know who they are. They have a lot that they're dealing with that I would have never been able to make it through. And that also includes social media. Then it also includes scrutiny. Then it also <laughs> includes judging. They have a lot to unpack, more than what we had to unpack. Because even though we had MySpace, MySpace was really not a thing that we went on every single day to get an opinion or to figure out what we wanted to do. So they do. So, so, I, 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 I'm going to put a position out there for young folks not to get on the Internet until they at least 28, until they found themselves. If the Internet is doing that much harm, stay the fuck off. Okay, so I, 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 I think. I, if I'm honest, I think I think we're missing the, this one small piece of the uh, the equation, which is, you know, if we're going to address the elephant in the room, I would say the elephant in the room is um, you have a lot of single parent households that are allowing the television and social media to raise the child, and then they are heavily influenced. I also think that we we grew up in communities where, you know, when you're talking about therapy, therapy, you know, it's kind of like taboo. Never speak about those things. So it's almost like. We are wanting children to hold themselves accountable when they don't want to understand what accountability is because we don't know what accountability is. I think a lot of things that people see is taught. You know, we don't just you're not just born with a hateful spirit. Something about, you know, being hated or, you know, experiencing that has taught you that. So I think a lot of things. You know, you know, young kids are coming in having to find themselves, you know, so there, there's a lack of discipline because there's no one disciplining them. And then the truth of the matter is we have made single parent households a norm when that's not normal. It's not normal for someone to raise a child by him or herself. It's not normal. We live in a situation where, you know, there's more kids experiencing with things that we would never allow ourselves to. Uh, our parents was never allowed to experience, you know, and things of that nature. So the idea of being accountable, sure, anybody can read the definition of it, but until you're you're faced with an experience where you're having to hold yourself accountable, you have to understand that, you know, respect looks differently amongst a lot of different people, especially when they grow up in an area or a home where respect is not even a thing. So I think the idea is, you know, wanna, we just have to be mindful that how we grew up is not how a lot of kids are growing up today. And, recognize that and hold ourselves accountable i think as a collective and one of the things about holding ourselves accountable is understanding that not everybody has the same upbringing that we have and when we come across people that's never had the same upbringing that we have rather than you know in my opinion it's it, it's all about relationships it's easy for us to say what someone is doing wrong but it's very hard for us to build that relationship with that person that's doing something wrong and then find a way to be able to bridge the gap and teach them what we feel may or may not be you know a way of being acceptable i mean it's it's even down to saying yes sir no sir yes ma'am no ma'am we've gotten away from some of the basic principles that we were actually taught so i think i think everybody has a valid point i just i personally believe that the missing key is the elephant in the room which is a lot of kids are having to raise themselves a lot of a lot of us came from a two-parent home a lot of us participate in all the drama and bs in their 40s and 50s came from a two-parent home and a lot of these single parents which do not get a lot of respect for i'm pretty sure y'all don't hear a tv on in this house because i'm a single parent and i don't raise my children that way a great deal of single parents do not raise their children that way but when it comes down to it they're a single or there are um there are two parent households that pass their children the same type of devices. And when they go to school, that is also being um, at the forefront because that's how the world is now. We have to be able to be elders. And in order to be elders, you cannot yell, you cannot scream, you cannot fuss. That's not going to get your point across because at the end of the day, we don't want to hear that either. Nobody can come up to us and scream, yell, fuss, scream. And, and be able to get your point you? across. That's not are how you telling your boss that too? To be to are you center. telling your boss that too? But I don't the thing have a is boss. That he, he, I don't have a boss. Okay. Okay, well, fine. If you don't have one, most of us yeah. will. But the, but the thing is that accountability is just simple. 
we are blaming everybody for anything and everything. Accountability is taking blame away from everybody and putting your choices on you. Right. We don't make mistakes. We make choices. And Just as I told my grand, hold on, let me finish. Just it, like it, I told my grandson last week, like when, somebody, he, when, he, when, he spilled, when he spilled, when he spilled, when he spilled, when he spilled cereal on the floor, when he spilled cereal on the floor, I told him, "You make the mess, you clean the mess up." Right. He didn't know how right. to clean it. He didn't know how to clean it. But Grandpa's gonna show you how. It starts at home. You know, so therefore, he has to understand if he makes the mess, you clean the mess up. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I agree with um, that's a personal journey. You can't force people to do that. Man. And you, you know, we, we're not trying to force anybody to do anything. It still comes down to choice. We, it still comes down to choice. You don't have to listen to a word we say. If you choose not to do it, that's your choice. Nobody is forcing anybody to do anything. Nobody's forcing nobody to be accountable. When, when That's you're, a choice. When you're grown, oh, you, when no. you're grown it's, it's bigger than cereal on the floor. When you're grown, your parents... You know what? I, 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 I can't stand a, talking to disingenuous a, people who don't understand what we're saying. That's a starting a, point, ma'am. That's, That's a starting point, ma'am. That's a starting point, and I'm trying to elaborate further to educate. You're not the only starting point, and you're not the ending. There's a bil billions of people on this planet that has education. How about we and they sit down, it up. down and they and fucking it up? Nah, nah. Well, maybe you are, but whoever raised you is the blueprint, right? And at the end of the day, what you take with your blueprint, you can expand on that or you can take it and you can rip it up. That is self accountability. Accountability is only for self. You cannot force anybody to be accountable. You cannot make anybody accountable. They have to sit back and see their ways to be accountable for their own actions. It does not belong to the next person. I can't tell my children, I'm teaching you how to be accountable for this, that, and the third. When they get grown, they're still going to have to apply that the way they apply that. It's not for me to tell them how to make themselves accountable. It's for me to teach them, okay, well, this is how it's going to go in life if you choose to be this way. But I'm not accountable for their actions. If they end up going in, in, under them bars or whatever the case may be, that's not my actions. That's theirs. And they have to be accountable. So, yeah, this fight is almost over. So you saying, so I'm, I'm, here, I'm here with both ends saying, though, but I don't know. I think I'm more swaying to what Black's saying, right? So you you basically saying we can't teach our child how to be accountable, even though we know they're gonna make their own decisions and stuff. But I think it actually it do start from home. That's one thing I, I just can't I cannot I, not agree I, that. I agree with that to a small degree. But when it comes down to children and as they get older, we've all seen the show Intervention, and those families did not come. Most of those families did not come from that type of abuse, right? They end up still being under that realm because yeah. they don't know how to fix their own problems when they're grown. Not when they're children, but when they're grown. So accountability, yeah. you tell your children in order to be accountable, you got to sit by yourself. There's a rhyme and a reason and a way to do it. Because when they get grown, you can't just be there on the phone 24-7 telling no. them what to do, go and bail them out when they get in trouble. I'm not trying to hinder anybody's growth. You have to learn based on your own experience. But if you're going to teach it correctly, tell them to go to the corner cracks of their closet and think about what they did. Not necessarily, oh, but yeah. They got to know what they're thinking about, though. They got to right. know what to think. You still got to guide them. Like, even life don't even teach them different, but you still got to show them right from wrong. That's right. just in general. What, what, they're not going to figure this out on their own. Yeah, I'm not what saying is, that they're going to the figure argument? it out on their own, Kev. But what I'm saying is that the small minute things that we do as far as adults we we inform the children when they get to a certain age and they can actually understand that if you go out past this time frame right and i tell you to be back home if you don't come back home at that time frame there are going to be consequences right the consequences is because you did not listen right so in order to be accountable for that, I'm going to put you in your room and I'm going to have you think about it. I'm not going to sit there, and yell, scream and cuss at you, because at the end of the day, what is that going to solve? That's not making you even more accountable. That's just telling you that I can yell, scream and cuss. The message is not going to be clear. I'm going to explain to you what all transpired to get you to this point. And what could have happened if you would have taken the route of not doing what I was telling you to do, because it's based on your safety. But they also have to be able to think about it.
And who's going to think what adult up here is going to say, yeah, when you yell, scream and cuss at me, I get the message. Who, who gave the example of parenting being yelling, screaming and cussing at kids? Did, did somebody say that? Oh, a lot of stuff going on stuff up here. Going on. That's why I mentioned that. Kev, I, I enjoyed my time here. I'm, I'm going to get me something to eat. Hi. Hey, I'm here, brother, man. I'm still here, man. I'm got, I got some time for y'all today. Oh, yeah, I got some more people coming up. <clears throat> Hi. I'm here, though. I just wanted to chime What's up, Aisha? Welcome to the live. What you got for us? It's Aisha. It's Aisha, by the way. But um, I don't have my kids. My bad. <laughs> I don't have kids. I'm in my early 20s myself. Well, so... I don't have too much insight and wisdom, but I do work part time at a middle school and just I've I've been noticing like the way these kids act like in middle school at 12 and 13 years old. I was never allowed to like act like that in middle school and my job's raising an African household and it just really blows me like the way they act like so just, you know, lack of respect, you know, so and I definitely believe that 100 percent starts at the home like. I would never go to school and like curse my teacher out. Like I've had students like curse me out, cursing in the classroom, on their phone, all of that. And it's just the fact that I have seventh graders that are 12, 13 years old that cannot read. And it concerns me. You can't read, but you're disrupting the class, you know, making noise on your phone, being inappropriate, like doing everything but focusing on your work and you can't read. And for me, like, you know, I always stay calm and try to, you know, be gentle with the students, but I just feel like they don't they don't have like respect and that kind of like understanding of you need to respect adults and you need to like behave a certain way or just even the thought of them thinking like, oh, I'm 12, 13. I have this new iPhone, this new this, da, 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 whatever. So I'm grown like, you know, hair, nails, makeup, social media, all of that. It's like that seems to be like their main focus instead of their education versus like me when I was in middle school, high school and stuff like my parents didn't get the chance and opportunity to go to, you know, high school at all, you know, back in Mali from where they're from. So I really took my education and just my school, like, seriously, like, my parents would never get a call home saying, like, oh, I was doing this in class and doing that in class. Like, you know, I just took my education very seriously. And mm. then uh, I think Gay Jane, I'm sorry, I don't know how they say your name, but I kind of agree with what she was saying in terms of, like, you need to have them like sit and think about like their actions, like without, you know, cursing and yelling and like beating the child. Like you can still like make the child be accountable for their actions and just kind of like understand what they did wrong without like beating them or cursing them or like having that kind of negative connotation to it. But I do believe like as the parent, you have to set that tone and say like, hey, you can't one you can't speak to the parent like that so i feel like that's where it starts at is like some of them speak to their parents like this like cursing at the parents or yelling at the parents being inappropriate with the parents or just in their house in general so i feel like a lot of them have that in their household so that's why you know they don't feel any type of way about doing that in the school so i feel like that's definitely on the parents in terms of like hey like you have to respect me and you have to respect other adults you know Isha, can I ask you a quick question? You said you a teacher, right? A part-time teacher, yes. Can I? Okay, and you said that your style of teaching is approaching the students and helping them uh, with whatever they need. You're trying to do your best to show them that, look, there is a different way. I'm approaching you this way because I care. Allow right. me to help you. And right. the response that you get is what? Um, so the response that I get is just, you know, still disrespectful, still like, I don't care. And just like, it kind of, you know, still escalates from there. Like one student, I haven't been to work like in almost a week now, because the mm. last week I was at work, you know, mm -hmm. it was the one, it was three specific students. So mind you, I'm like 22, 23. So I'm not that much older than them, but I'm still their teacher. I teach STEM engineering electives. Um, so yeah. One student was in there, like, you know, just cursing and just speaking inappropriately and just kind of disturbing the whole class. Like, even the students that were participating in the activity, they were disturbing the whole class. And the other student was on their phone, like, watching inappropriate videos and everything. Mm. And the other student, you know, just roughhousing all of that. 
So, you mm-hmm. know, I, I try like, you know, two or three times to say like, hey, could you guys, you know, put your phones away? Could you lower your voice? You know, mm-hmm. focus on the activity until like, you know, it got to the point where it's like I had to step out the classroom. So I'm not, you know, screaming or cursing at somebody's child because it's like. And, and sure, let me ask you, let me ask you, let me uh-huh. ask you another question and then put this in with the rest of what you're saying. Right. The, the, um, how many students do you do you have when you when you teach for class? How many students? Um, so usually like the full class is maybe 30 to 35 students, but 30 to I'm- 35 students for one person, right? Yes. All right. Uh, now let me ask you up. They split the classes up now. So I only do half of the class. So now it's usually okay. like 15. It's uh-huh. like about 15 students. Cause I only teach electives. It's STEM engineering electives. So I'm not a certified teacher or anything. This is a new program. They started in the uh, Houston independent school district where, you know, they hire like people with degrees to come teach electives. So the thing is, I have an engineering degree. I don't have to work at this school at all. Mm. I'm just there like, you know, as a transition, I'm transitioning between corporate jobs. So, you know, I needed something to do, needed some work. Wow, that's excellent. That that's excellent. Up. That's all to you. And the thing is, it's just like, for me, it was kind of like dear to me, like teaching. Mm-hmm. It was kind of like a full circle moment for me because my parents are, you know, immigrants from Mali, West Africa, like in in their villages and stuff there was they didn't have no opportunity to go to middle school to go to high school to get a college mm-hmm. degree or anything so i really take my education like seriously and i feel like it definitely made a difference in my life like all the schools i've been to and mm-hmm. my teachers from middle school from actually from elementary school all the way to college just were very invested in me and just knew that like you know i was a gifted mm-hmm. intelligent young woman and I did a lot of programs in middle school and high school that eventually led me to getting my engineering degree. So I'm there in the school, just kind of like paying my way forward, letting these kids mm-hmm. know like, hey, you know, there's other things in the world and in life besides like, you know, rapping and being a musician and, wow. you know, working in a club and like all this other stuff, like just because- you And know, let me like, ask you a question, um, Isha. Yeah. I know you I know you explained it, but I want to ask you another question if you don't mind, yeah. Kevin, I'm sorry. Um, uh-huh. Would you say that the majority of the students have two parents or single parent mother homes? Uh, I would say so single the mother homes. I I feel like I don't really know the demographics, but I feel like majority of the students that are acting up are coming from single parent homes because mm-hmm. the school is like mostly black and Hispanic, like a mix of mm-hmm. black and Hispanic students. And I feel mm-hmm. like the students that are mostly like acting up and just you know, not really respectful at all, are mostly coming from single parent homes. Okay, that's all yeah. I wanted to know. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Isha, you say you, you are teaching- Hey, before the next person go, before the next person go, give me a second, I need to get that break going. Uh, it's what, 35 people in here, man, if y'all can share to five, that's for the lazy people, but if you not lazy, go ahead and share to 10 people, right? You know, I gotta make some offensive stuff. And then, yeah, hit the FYPs like you see codified down there if you in the box and hit them likes. Try to give me, since it's 35, I feel like y'all can get me to, mm, y'all can get me to 15 or 17K. Try to get me there real quick. Oh, yeah, y'all follow me. I'm trying to get to 1,000 so I can go live. <laughs> hey, you say you work in Houston? Uh, yes, in, um, Houston Independent School District, um, public schools. Okay, yeah, I used to teach down in, um... I'm in Houston now. I used to teach down mm-hmm. at um, a little private co- private school. I don't want to say private, but a uh, charter school, high uh-huh. school business and economic success before it shut down. Uh-huh. With, uh, what's his name? He in jail now. Pastor John Kirby of the 6,000 Heatherbrook. I'm not from Houston, so I, I wouldn't really know the school because okay. I'm not from Houston. Yeah, it's been shut down, but yeah, I, I used to teach down there too. I know what you're talking about. I know how yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't I don't even think I'll continue at the school until the end of the year. Like initially I was gonna stay until the end of the semester, but I'm just like I don't have to do this, you know. Mm-hmm. So you actually getting weary. Um yeah, you know, it's really getting bad, especially like I mean, I know Kevin Kevin is from Detroit. Um um I'm from I'm from LA, uh LA. Um I have oh, I'm a, from other Atlanta. people mm-hmm. from Atlanta, uh Chicago. Mm-hmm. You know the Houston area, like you're saying, um, a lot of these schools that we see on some of the you know TV programs that they show, 
the interactions with some with the teachers you know it mm -hmm. was never like that at all where the teachers feel like i need to bring weapons to school to protect okay. myself because these children are not i mean you have young girls jumping up beating up on boys knocking them in the face you know it's 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 a, it's a rivalry in the classroom it's like the teachers can't even teach because you have a lot of distraction they're trying to be the class clown i mean we had class clowns but never to the point where you have a young person jumping up and right. trying to knock a teacher out you know what i'm saying it has gone too far and right. and, and 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 yes you know, no, you can't make somebody take accountability. That's yeah. not what we're trying to do. When you put yourself in a position to be, even if it was a, a preacher, everybody knows you go to church, the preacher is preaching a sermon. That preacher can't make you take accountability. You're going to go in there and listen, and it's going to be on you to, up to you to do it. But that doesn't mean that the message cannot be taught, and that doesn't mean that the instruction cannot go forth. It still has to go forth. You are going to be responsible as for what you're going to do. Young, old, it don't matter. You know, my only my only point to this whole conversation was just that I think that if we're going to be a community that so-called want to come together so bad, you do need to show some, uh, some, some respect to one another. And I think that some of these young people that do come to the panel, they have a lot to say and they browbeat us like it's y'all fault. No, it's not our fault that you're that maybe you didn't get the upbringing that you know that that you need that you need it but we are here to help you if you need that help but now with you, when you come at us in a certain way it's like we can't even help you wednesday's like forget it i'm done but it ain't gonna stop me from helping somebody else that wanted right. to help yeah because i've had a few students right where you know they get rowdy in the class and stuff or whatever but i noticed like oh they're really smart like you know they do the activity and everything but you know they get distracted or they get rowdy or you know they're around one of those students that are blatantly disrespectful that doesn't do any work so that that would kind of you know peer pressure and everything it's like mm, they're not doing their work or you know they acting up so let me act up with them versus you know i've seen them times where okay their little friend is not there or whatever and i see like a completely different version of them like participating in activity and all of that so you know so with some of the students i try to have like a one-on-one -on -one and say like hey you know you're really smart you're doing great in this class and everything like when you come in here like i'm only here for you know a few hours out the day to teach you guys about engineering different engineering activities because who knows you might be you know are some of our next engineers in the future because i had that example in middle school and high school is what led me you know, to pursue that career path. So, and, w and some of them, when I have those kind of like, okay, heart to heart talk, like individual one-on-ones, you know, they kind of understand and say like, okay, like, let me like rethink my actions and like correct myself. But some of them, you know, like I said, they just, you know, still disrespectful. And they're just like, oh, well, if I can't be great, then nobody else should be great in the class. Or if I don't like her, or if I'm being disrespectful, everybody else should treat her like that too, you know? Thing real quick um, um i would when i say when i say i'm done i i if 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 when dealing with a particular young person and they show me that you know okay this is the limit you know i'm not even receptive to you trying to mentor me trying to help me then i leave that for the next person my only hope is that the ones that i do work with like I can lead by example and the other students that are around that see me working with the ones that are willing for me to be there for them will see that and maybe because I'm gonna be honest with you if there there have been thoughts in my mind like I can't mm -hmm. I don't want to force myself on a child or a young person mm -hmm. because you don't know their trigger I, they'll turn around and hate you and want to mm -hmm. hurt you you yeah. know what I'm saying so like again I work in a school so if if I if I if I give if I put the fig leaf out and they don't bite I walk away because you don't want to further trigger them the one there there's um i work with the lady who has um works with iss kids in school suspension yep. like i have my own classroom but i see her all the time with these kids i've connected with a girl in there made a social contract with her hey hey zoe if you don't if you don't come back here and before you know anymore before thanksgiving i got some for you like she's really receptive to me now she ended up back in there and i'm gonna still keep communicating and talking to her and maybe the other kids in iss will see that the relationship and bond that we have and maybe they'll be open to it but i don't force them because i'm gonna tell you something I, you don't know what's going on in the minds of them D does that make sense what i'm saying like yeah. if i if i speak to you and say can i help you you know you want to talk about it? and no i'm Hey, I'm done because I don't want to oh, force no, them no, further. I, leave, I, leave the, I tell them to leave the classroom and 
something I noticed. So their their actual teacher, because I'm only the electives teacher, their actual teacher is a male teacher, an uh, older gentleman. He comes into the class after, you know, all this is going on. So I tell him what's going on. And he speaks to the students. And I could just see, like, you know, how much they respect him versus, you know, how they respect me and everything and how they get quiet and just like the whole tone of the class changes, you know, when he's speaking with them. You just, you just, you just too cute. You too cute. Cute, cute will never get that, that, res that response. <laughs> but, but I, I know it's been living in a culture today that doesn't like, like to, like criticism, critiques, or your choice not being theirs. If if you are not somebody, if if you not choosing somebody uh, as your choice for, for them, or if you have a critique about that, then you are shamed and vilified, and you will always get pushed back. All right, so yeah, yeah, but I think he was about to go and then codified after, and I'm paying attention now because the fight over, man. I want it fresh to win. Watch the same thing. So, y'all was all over the place. I don't know if y'all seen on the topic or not. I just jumped in when she was talking about the school. Mainly because I used to work down there in Houston. Uh, right to Hurricane Ike. So I know how it is in regard to teaching the young folk. Um, the thing you said, your classroom size was 35. Mine was, mine was 62 to 63 in the, in the cafeteria. Mixture of Houston kids and New Orleans kids. They ain't vibe, so I know how that is. Different cultures come different, you know, upbringings. Uh, the teaching responsibility, respect, all that is totally different. Yeah, I, I do know it's different when it comes to teaching as a male versus a female. Uh, it was a little bit different back in the day. Uh, I don't know if that was even on a topic. I didn't see what we're talking about. Finding yourself is real. So I'm going I'm to go back to that. So when we're talking about can you find yourself and can you trust yourself 100%? I, I, I never, I don't know anyone who trusts themselves 100% because they did. They won't make so many mistakes they do in their life. Facts. I mean, so many doubts about themselves. So now. Nah. Maybe some some days it's 60, 40, 40, 60, 80, 20, whatever it may be, but it's never 100 percent. Yeah, you know, put your all into it, but when you're putting your all into it, you still have some doubt, self-doubt. It's gonna be there. I mean, that's just how the mind is. It's mind a is human. Mind. That's called being a human. Right. <laughs> so that definitely now. Uh let me see. Tell a person you need to find yourself. What do you personally mean? Do you mean personally? Um that's what the form you learn from the cradle to the grave about yourself. You know, when I say the higher self, the lower self, you're good, you're bad. Um, as your good grows within you, so is your bad grows. And those, you know, hey, I shouldn't eat this cheesecake, this whole thing of cheesecake, I should take a slice instead of eating the whole thing because I know later on my stomach will be messed up. But you learn as you grow. I mean, if that wasn't the case, if we did have it all 100% intact, We'll have some heart diseases, heart failure, whatever it may be about the body that's breaking down, knowing that we shouldn't do this and that to our body, yet we do it anyways because it's pleasing, it's comforting, it feels good. So finding ourselves 100% when it comes to knowing ourselves, it's not just like a spiritual, mental thing. It's, it's encapsulate, encapsulates every aspect of ourselves. The way we treat ourselves, how we want to be treated by others, how we allow others to treat, treat us, how we um, feed our body, feed our mind, uh, what we say to others, what we say to ourselves in the quietness of our mind, all that. So finding that out, I mean, all right. the same thing as yesterday. T -T. Yesterday, the same as today. Something's new about yourself today that wasn't new about you yesterday. So 100% now, finding yourself is, is a daily, daily thing. The credit to the grave. Yeah. Okay. I, I like think uh codify was next. <clears throat> okay, can you hear me clearly? Yeah. Um when it comes to education, I don't know too much about like the elementary school setting or, or that type. 
But there was a point in time um, when I was a medic that I taught pre-hospital care. And um, it's one thing that I, that I did learn is that people learn different ways. Um, some people could just read the material and they get it. Some people could just see an example and not read the material and get it. Um, so I think um, it's just, I think, um, and they also taught, taught me how to observe somebody and, and correct them where they needed to be corrected. So just, um, just consider that. But I wanted to speak on um, older people because a young lady brought up um, older people. And, um, and I also heard an older person ask, what am I to do now? Because her children were gone out of the home. And I, um, I told her that your children are always going to be your children. They, they may not be a minor, but they're still your children. And the one thing that we need to consider is that um, an elder is not just an older person. Um, an elder is someone that could give you proper counsel. And I say proper for a reason because some counsel is not proper. And when I say that, I mean someone who has experienced something um, similar and actually um, created tools and applied those tools um, to yield a, to yield the result that they wanted to yield. And, and those people are able to bestow that on younger people. And it, it may not work the first time, you guys. Um, this society is very competitive and it's very abrasive. And, and we learn to adjust ourselves to live within that. So it may take a few times. Um, for an example, when I brought up not being discourteous and the young lady was in here and not only her, but she interrupted some when they were talking and it may be tomorrow. She may come in and I may be in the box and then I may bring it up again and I may say again, not being discourteous is a way for us to finish our points so that we could paint the picture that we need to paint so somebody could get what we're saying. Being discourteous, when it when that happens, you stop knowledge. You, you stop the, you stop some, somebody from maybe getting that one thing they need to execute something. So, and when she they see me tomorrow and hear that, she may even question it. Who is he to say not to interrupt somebody when I'm triggered? And then she may think, you know what? He sat in that box and he didn't say a word. He didn't interrupt anybody. And when he spoke, nobody interrupted him and he was able to get his point across. You know, we, we, we should learn to have patience with us. This stuff that we're going through, we didn't do this to us. Somebody else did it to us and then told us to do it to us. If we can at least stop doing it to us, we may be able to focus on them and get them to a place where they do, don't do it to us anymore. But we got to kind of deconstruct this thing. And uh, let's start with us. Like I say, structure and order, standards and principles, and a code of conduct. With that, I yield the floor. Okay. I agree. Being an elder does not mean that you're old. I think the floor is open. Kids is looking. What? I was wondering what happened. I was waiting for her to, and then she said that. I thought she was going to want detail it. And I'm like, I mean, did it freeze or something? Okay, y'all, y'all want a detail? You go ahead, go ahead, explain it, explain it. I'm pretty sure they want to hear that. You could be 18 and become a monk. 10 years after 18, which is 28, they are considered elders. Mm. 20 years after that, you're a great elder. So if others see that 
having intellect and being able to have dialogue and being able to reach people does not come in great volume but comes with exactly what you're saying with proof you can be an elder i consider myself an elder i'm pretty sure wednesday considers herself an elder you don't have to be old to be an elder and it's a lot of these older people that have shunned me and my old ass out of boxes because they have this one track mind mm. that just mean they got old Hey, you know what? Mm -hmm. Let me say this. When I started in EMS, emergency medical services, I was maybe like in my mid 20s. And it was some people who started at 18. They had a few years experience on me. They were my elders when it came to emergency medical services. You know, like I said, it's not really about being an older per generally speaking, those people are older, but specifically, they could be younger than you and have lessons to teach. Yield the floor. But but elders can be, or elders should be, one who's experienced in something. Ten years of experience being a month should make you an elder. Yes, ma'am. And, and with life, if you if, 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 if you've experienced if you experienced life. Hopefully, if you experience the things in life, you think that should make you an elder in the life. And, and being a, an elder is all relative to, to the age of the people that you're talking to. I feel like being an elder involves you to be disciplined. Having enough discipline. Discipline is a big word that people like to categorize just in, in the dictionary, but it does come with great responsibility. So if you have a great deal of discipline concerning a lot of things in life, I don't think there's an age to that. So you're saying an 18 year old should be an elder? 18 year old as a monk cannot be an elder. I said 10 years later because they are watched carefully over their disciplinary tactics concerning their self. They use a lot of accountability too. And what they're not willing to be accountable for, they do not partake in. And that takes discipline. A lot of us don't even have discipline enough not to hop in the bed with the person they don't know yet. So a lot of people cannot be elders just because they're old. Y'all about to have me look this thing. You look the difference between elder and older now. I think I I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying that being older makes you wiser. I'm saying being experienced makes you wiser. It's some people that never experience certain things. There are people out here that can literally tell you all about SEX and they're still virgins. I would not opt them out. There are some young people that have experienced things in life and that does not make them an elder just based on experience. What I said earlier, I think that discipline can definitely teach someone else something. If you are disciplined, you have the sound mind to be able to teach and not just tell. So you don't have to have a great deal of all these experiences just to be able to stand on a podium and say, I've went through this. That doesn't mean you have discipline. There are people that are standing outside on the court and waiting for their next. Are they disciplined because they're experiencing that? No. And this is the problem that we have right now because everything is being convoluted and, 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 and contorted to mean to fit your narrative. You know, it's I mean, not to fit my narrative, to, sir. I, I, ne never mind. Oh, you're right. You, you're right. I'm you got something that's a fact and you're refuting a fact. The flat fact is that you, you're adding discipline to being an elder? Yes. <laughs> It's, wide, it's widely oh, okay. okay, you got it. We don't teach discipline. If we did in the U.S. teach discipline the way it's supposed to be, a lot of these conversations on panels would not happen. A lot of them that's would facts. not happen. That's facts. Yes, ma'am. And that's younger and elder that need. They lack discipline. That's the thing. That's the reason why a lot of us can't practice what we preach and stuff. And then we want to blame it on the people that's younger than us. That ain't <laughs> that'd be funny. To, but I am big on that because we we grew up with that. Uh, um, do as I say, not as I do. That's the worst thing we could have ever done. But we, I am firm that we got to we got to uh, lead by example. We have to practice what we preach. 
and that even mean bypassing your own desires all these things you got that's that that's self-discipline i've been i talk about this a lot on my life that's the really the key to a lot of things but a lot of us don't want to do it because it's i guess it's hard and it stops us from doing what we want instead of doing what we need hey you know what if i make it go ahead hey you know what um this this is the thing about um some people get punished um punished and discipline confused um mm. discipline comes from the word disciple disciples were students of a teacher who was supposed to be the example of how they should think speak and behave so when you say you know discipline you you know you might want to look at it from that point of view because punishment is the result of somebody breaching one of those um, standards or principles or code of conduct that you have so discipline is a student looking at the example which is the teacher it's like a child mimicking a parent and one of the three things when it comes to uh, raising mentally sound children the third one is extreme access control to our children until we teach them until they learn what they need and hold on Ex extreme access control until they learn the tools necessary to navigate the world and that includes keeping them away from people that'll be negative influences to them so we as parents can be perfect examples to our children but if we sending them to public schools and daycare centers friends family and acquaintances that have bad habits they're going to pick that up. Children can't wait to soak up something. They could be dead looking like, like I mean, they could be not dead, but they could be focused on a cartoon and they listening to every word of your conversation on the phone when you don't think mm. they are, you know? And then when they behave or they do these things that they learn from somebody besides you, it, it causes, you know, it causes you to be like, what you doing? Where did you learn that? You know, and it's hard to break them from that. And it's really not their fault because it's our responsibility to protect them from these negative influences. Thanks. You know, like the father that whooped his two teenage daughters because he walked in on them twerking on Instagram. That uh -huh. wasn't their fault. It was him that was supposed to protect them from learning how to twerk. Uh -huh. You know? Some of us punish our children when we should have been punishing ourselves. Mm, right. I talked to my dad about so, that. That's crazy. Yeah, you heard about that. So why? Or at least, or at least, if they learn from somebody else, talk to them first. Let them know that it's wrong. Don't hurry right. and run to the belt that fast and then ah, you ain't supposed to be doing that. No, that's your fault because you let them slip through the cracks. So talk to right. them first. Let them know. Hey, no, no more of that, man. Don't you know what I'm saying? Talk to them. Let them know it's wrong. Now from that point, now if they go there, then you got to do what you got to do. But yeah, I feel you on that. You, I, I've, Lord, always, you, I've always, I've always seen discipline as teachable moments. As, as a matter of fact, it's an escalation of discipline. You know what, what I'm saying is that discipline, from my perspective, should never the, the first form or first line of discipline should never be physical. Never. It's, it's, it's an opportunity to teach your children how you want them to behave. It's a teachable moment, and I've always used it as such. And so, just like my, my, da my, my, my daughter, uh, she spilled something. She was terrified because her mom was spanking. But like I said, this is an opportunity for you to, for me to teach you how to clean this up, and it's more time for us to spend together. We could do this together, but don't keep spilling shit around the house. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I think as Mr. Codified was saying, you know, how parents should hold, uh, I don't know if that was discipline or accountability, but basically when you were saying that, um, you know, kind of like scolding kids for doing things, but you're actually doing the same things yourself, um, I feel like that just kind of goes back to, but I don't know. Yes, you definitely should monitor your children and who they're around and like, you know, their public schools, their daycares, all of that. But I feel like the hard thing now for parents, I'm not a parent, but you know, I have younger siblings and 
I, me and my siblings grew up, all grew up in the same household, but we just have very different, you know, personalities and things like that, just because, you know, because of our environment and surroundings. Like, I didn't really take, a, take as much of, like, the environment and surroundings, but I feel the difficult thing now with today's society is that, you know, there's social media and there's just so many other influences to say, like, okay, you can, you can be the perfect parent. They can have the perfect role models. They can have the perfect siblings or go to the best school and all of that. But I feel like the hard thing now is, like, there's so many other, like, influences from social media to friends to just, you know, society in general, rappers, singers, like, all of that where it kind of makes it hard to, even though you as the parent or role models or whatever are doing their best to make sure like you know I want to raise my child like this you know they have all these other influences coming from the world that kind of makes it hard I feel like for kids to kind of say like okay this is my identity this is who I want to be or you know my parents taught me right from wrong or my parents taught me you know this certain way but my friends are doing this or I saw this on the internet or people are talking about that I feel like that's something that a lot of you know, teenagers or just young people struggle with in general, like having all these different like influences and things. Hey Wednesday. Hey my love. And I want I miss you so much. I miss, I miss you. you too. I miss you so what much. The, I'm so happy to see you. Is I'm tripping or was was y'all just in love the whole entire time? Wait, is yeah, I'm tripping? Hold on. We have but, but I didn't say anything. So oh, I was, so my brain, I was like, hold up, am I, am I the only this dimension to this? <laughs> okay, it makes sense. I can get you. Okay. <laughs> Just call me off guard because y'all both reacted evenly. <laughs> I'm like, huh? <laughs> so I'm going to make a statement and I want I want to know who can relate to what I'm about to say. Okay, because I've been listening and I've, I've had contributions and I've been listening and soaking it all in. As an older woman, right, for me, when when a young person disrespects me, that is almost like a measurement. In other words, what I'm saying, I'll give you an example of what I mean. Young boy lost his father. Tragic experience. He turned to, you know, trying to be a little thug, doing illegal things and, you know, doing drugs and everything. But he, but in spite of all of what he was engaging in, he was never disrespectful, right, to adults. He, he was a bad behind, but he never, like, if you said something to him, he wouldn't disrespect you. So, so to me, because I'm, I'm feeling now where I'm at, I found myself in this thought process and in this conversation. When, when, when you, the ones that are disrespectful, that's like a measurement of, what, of how far I can step to you. Do you understand? Or how far I can step in to help you. That keeps me from approaching. Does that make sense? Because there are some kids that are making bad choices and doing this, that, and the other, not doing good in school, fighting, gang banging, all, getting arrested, but they're respectful. Yeah, and yeah. does that make sense what I'm saying, Kevin? Did you get look, it's like I a measuring it. tool. It, it's a measuring tool for me, and it lets me know how far I can step into the room. Uh -huh. And if okay. you're very disrespectful, I, I'm, a, I'm afraid to come in the room because it, it, it's like saying, oh, my gosh, they're too far gone at this point. Does that make sense? Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. It's, it's, I think everybody got this is a tolerance thing. That's all it is, man. And being observant of what you who you talking to and all that. AJ, I see you. I see you. Jane, that makes sense. I always like to hear people say. I like to hear people tell me. I don't see how Wednesday do it. I'm gonna always give you your flowers because it's a lot to deal with. Because y'all have to deal with dealing with so many children at one time. All these different personalities. All this adolescence going on in the room. Hey, Penny. <laughs> It'd be so funny when they see each other. <laughs> And then, broke out of you know, That's like a Tourette's or something. Lesson. And then these kids are recording, you know, and they want to be popular on now social media. But the thing that I don't demonize the social media either, because as I'm the parent of the household and you're living in my house, you're going to watch what I want you to watch. If it's something you stumble across, and this is why communication is important in any type of relationship, especially in parenting. If you stumble across um, sexy red twerking, which my daughter has stumbled across sexy red, okay? She young folks. And I sat down and I explained who sexy red is from the vantage point that I have. 
Pink and brown. Automatically, she did not want to engage in her music. That was a choice of hers. I don't listen to Sexy Red. Therefore, the only way she could discover is through her friends and through social media. I don't demonize anything online because there's a lot of things online. If you're a moderator for Facebook and TikTok, you'll see a great deal of crazy things that they do not discuss. But communication about everything. What are you saying to your child once they see this? Do you have enough communication with them? Do they respect you enough? Are you an elder in their life that they can come to you and talk to you about these things versus just responding to them and, um, you know, um, wanting to be the same image or wanting to say the same things? Because a lot of the two parent households, and I'm going to say it because my daughter goes to a collegiate school, it ain't no different at a collegiate school. Them kids are just as disrespectful as any other children because there are lazy parents that just tell their children, respect this house, respect me and your father. No, you respect people in general. Respect is something Thanks. that should be given in general. But they go to the school and they talk smack and they cut up the private schools. They do the same thing in private school. It's an adolescence thing. It's wanting to be disrespectful or not even want to be disrespectful, wanting to be popular, wanting to cross that line, not having any type of um they, they don't see it just like us as grown folks. We didn't see at 17 to 18 that we had an ending point. We didn't see that there were danger signs ahead. We didn't know that. We had to be taught that. And sometimes through experience, we weaponize our children based on being the representation of who we are. And we don't want to come to terms with accountability. So we place it on our children to correct it. No, stop being scared of telling your children who you are. Stop being scared of telling your children if you was on that block, tell them you was on that block. Tell them why you got off that block. If you out here 304, tell them why you were 304. Tell them when you decided not to be a 304. We're too busy not being humans with our children. So then when they become humans, we want them to be better than us. They're supposed to be their own person, not us. They are us exactly. We know what to correct because we are looking at ourselves and we need to keep it real. Okay, somebody try to put some fire in this boy. Chill. Oh, is it hey, you know, uh, if I may care, yeah, I wanted to explain it when it comes to teaching the tools. Um, I mean, what, what I mean is like, um, like having a program. Like, like teach them to see like R-ism, you know, hand, how to handle, you know, people who are discourteous and that type of stuff. And what I mean is you take them out with you and you tell them, you know, you have them observe you handling business at the bank, grocery store, auntie house or whatever. You, you get what I'm saying? Gas station. And then what you do, you tell them, like, listen. These tools right here is what I want. And you, you tell them you're going to take point and I want you to use the tools, you know, that you observe me and you question me about. I want you to take the lead and I want you to use them like you let them exchange the money and talk to people and how they move and you observe them correct them if it's necessary. And then afterwards you have a sit down and you tell them how they did. You know, I mean, they, they intentionally do it like that. Because let me tell you, I went to take a young lady out when I was young. I went to take a young lady out on a date and I pulled up. I don't do the honking thing. So I went and knocked on the door and I, um, you know, father opened the door, I introduced myself. And I was like, hey, you know, my name is Codified. I'm here to take, you know, main thing on the date. You know, and it was, well, you know, whatever. We chopped it up a little while and. On the way to the car to go on the date, I went to the passenger door to let her in. I seen her cut an angle and go around the front of the car to the driver's side. And I'm just standing at the door looking like, what the hell is she doing? And she looked up like, what's wrong? I was like, what you doing over there? She's like, I thought you was going to let me drive. I'm like, you don't have a driver's license. And I told her, come on, get out the street. Come back over here to the sidewalk. I went back, knocked on the door. Her father answered the door, and um, I told her to step in the house, and I was like, look, um, uh, Mr. Bunny, you know what? I, I told him what happened, and I said, I don't think I'm going to be able to keep Bunny safe. 
And he was just looking at me for a second because I wanted to say, you got some more work to do. But I didn't want to say that, you know. So he looked at me and he just, I understand, son. And, you know, and I told her, hey, hey you know, Jay, Jane, I'll talk to you later. You know, whatever. And I went on about my business. See, because just like we should take our daughters and sons on their first date so that they can see how they should be treated and how they should treat the person that they're on a date with is how we should do is, is how we should teach our children these tools that they need to navigate this world out here and still be available to be their proper counsel when they leave the home because it's like i said they're still our children they they you know they're gonna get 30 and 40 and you're gonna have to give them your 30 and 40 year old experience and how to handle it you know with that i yield the floor thank you sir There you go. The Jim Jim drop in. <laughs> so y'all got real quiet with it all up. Do I gotta bring one of them young them young them youngies up here? <laughs> we, don't want, we, don't, we, we don't want the smoke, man. We don't want the smoke. <laughs> it's like I don't want the smoke. Don't get quiet. No. I don't want the smoke. I, don't mind. I no, got time you know. today. I told you I don't work Saturdays no more. I get to be on this. <laughs> So I James hear all the what was going on, but I heard some of it, and oh, that's the young people. Much, man. That's young people. That's how we. That's how we acted. Not all of us, but majority of us, when it came down to one to listen to the word of any, you know, Adele or elder. That's how we yeah. acted. And you right about that. You right. That's why I be trying to even. That's why I wasn't even trying to go back and forth with her either. I do be trying to, uh, and that's why I be realized I can't stoop down to, you know, to certain levels when I already overcame that before, right? And I know what they probably going through and stuff. So that's why, I, I mean, I know a lot of feelings and all that stuff get into it, though, but it's just sometimes it always take being the, you know, the bigger person and stuff. So that's why I don't be trying to go back and forth and be like, you must do this and talk like that. You see that right there? Because you used to be that see right, see that right there person too, right? You ain't like when people was doing that to you, though. So, I mean, I'll be trying to at least try to be, you know, just fair in general with that. Because a lot of, a lot of, all of us, and it's even older folks that's doing the same exact thing. Like, they just, you know, come with the one-track mind and all that stuff. And I know what I know. You can't teach me anything and all that stuff. But it's like, like I said, at the end of the day, we got to all... We got to listen to one another. We got to take the time and, and listen with our feelings to the side. That'd be our problem. We get in our feelings and not trying to hear anything from one another. That That's the thing. We never going to learn anything. I believe we can learn from anybody for real. They could be young. They could be a kid. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to still be able to learn something from them. I mean, everybody is teachable. If you if you set your life to not to act like you know everything, then it's a wrap. You already done lost in the game already because you just only want to know what you know. How you gonna learn anything from anybody else if you only know what you know and feel like you just unteachable? But it'd be that it'd be that it's an ego thing too though, cause like we we are quick and I've been I be having to get out there too though. Like who are you to tell me this? Like I've been I've been doing this way before you though. But that's that that's that um that's that that's that ego man that ego and pride. We don't want nobody telling about us, especially when we know we got the years. Sometimes shoot, we gotta probably throw in that towel. Sometimes and just let somebody sound like they smart or make them say like they know what they know, just to, just so they can be heard. That's all it is. And I be and I go through this stuff myself too, because sometimes I I don't like that feeling. I be having to you know like duh you know, but I just gotta take the deep breath. Like all right, they don't know that I know for real, and I'm gonna let them know. You know I'm gonna put it in a way like you know I understand you and whatever. But if they I get if they kind of with the smart mouth well you know what i'm saying like sometimes you gotta sometimes you gotta be petty with them and play the same game or whatever but at the end of the day a lot of a lot of people just want to be heard that's all it is and that's on both ends both both sides want to be heard older younger or oh, everybody every last person that's just what it is once we do that we better understand nikki what's the deal i ain't seen you in 200 years <laughs> But just like Jane was saying to that point, um, having an open door of communication, um, that's very important. That's the way I was raised. And mm -hmm. it's not it's not just so much of people people think if you don't go to your kids and whoop their bus off back. I know Black Chicago was also touching on that point too. I'm not sure who else might have touched on that. Going to your kids and 
beating them off first rip. I think you said that too, Kev. Beating them off first rip, that's not helping. That's only making them scared. That's not having them feel like you're their safe zone because as a parent, that's what you most importantly want because you want them to come back to you and talk to you about anything that's going on. I can sit down at the table right now with my parents and I have for the last 33 years, or I mean, I'm 33 now, but however long I would need advice, um, be able to sit down. But when your birthday, hold up. I do some competition real quick. All right, I'll stay in my little kid place. You got me by some months. Uh, I can still sit down at the table with them and have conversation with them and, and feel like it's safe to have a conversation with them. And I remember, of course, I'm not going to talk about a certain person, but I was on somebody else live and I was telling them about, you know, when I got caught smoking. And I'm like, no, my daddy didn't beat me. Now, I did get on punishment, but I didn't get a Rich, beat another lives, another lives, buddy. Cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get a beat down. I mean, I didn't get a beat down, but I did get on punishment, but I got to talk. And my dad's like, look, this is why you shouldn't be doing this. Because when you come with that hypocritical, I've never done this, like Jane was stating, I've never done this. I've never done that. And you talking down on them like you've never been in that position. Mm. It's more so looking like, okay, so I can't come to you about anything because only thing you'll do is scream at me, beat, beat on me. That makes no sense whatsoever. Instead of being like, look, I've been there. You know, both my mom and exactly. my dad were on the south side of Chicago. So they both were in gangs growing up in high school. Oh, Park like Forest, baby girl. Park Forest. Where you at? <laughs> my dad's Chapman and my mom uh, from Adam, 80, 82nd of Ada, I think it is. She's from Inglewood. My wife's from my wife is from Inglewood. I'm sorry, I mean it cut in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but anyway, graduated from Lane Tech. Forty years ago, <laughs> and they both went to Simeon, so that's how they met. Um, but yeah, like they, you know, they instead of being like, "Look, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that," it's like, "Look, we've been there, done that. We've been in the streets, we've done this, we've done that. That's what we learned from it. It's not going to get you nowhere. That's better than being like, "Don't you do that? You shouldn't do that. That is terrible." Because they're not gonna, they're not gonna feel that trust. And that's what a lot of adults are, you know, that's what a lot of older generation thinks. Like, I'm going to scream at them and I'm going to punish them. and I'm going to beat them down and I'm going to put my hands on them. That's not helping because only thing that's going to do is have them do it behind your back. That's it. They're not going to come to you for advice. They're not going to they're not going to uh, trust what you're saying. They're just going to trust what the world is giving them which is so much social media, which is why a lot of times we definitely, which is now more than ever, we got to keep that door open because these kids are exposed to everything. My four-year-old right now be on the phone. I'm phone check. Let me see what you're looking at. Let me see what you're watching. Keep that volume up loud. Let me, you know, so that I can know what's going on. But you just got to be more involved with your kids. And like I said, keep that door open. And I land my plane now. I hear you. Mm. <laughs> Oh, y'all sound like y'all want me to go do some more pre-sessions again because y'all are too quiet. Yeah, I feel you on that, though. I do. Uh, got I'm big on that lead by example, man. Uh, that's the main thing, for real. And stop being so, uh, this lazy parenting. And it's funny, though. But I, I know I ain't no parent, though, but I see it. I'm very observant of it. That's the reason why I, um... Probably why I don't have kids now. Marie, what's the deal? Come on in the box. We want to hear from you. Uh, but, the, yeah, I see it a lot. It's lazy parenting and and uh, a lot of them scared. They love their kids so much. They don't want to do anything to them. They let them run them over and all these things. They look at it as, um, I want to do want you to be better than I once was and all this stuff, but it'd be for all the wrong things. I, I want to buy my kids these Gucci shoes and all. They, I don't even know if there's such thing as those. But all this other stuff, like, you going for off the wants to make your kids better, not what the needs is, and they got it all twisted up. But then again, them are the parents that was not ready to be parents, even though no parent is ready, but it's something that's just really, really not ready. You know what I'm saying? That's just like literally kids that's still taking care of kids. And then they just become kids with just responsibilities. That's all that be. You know what I'm saying? They, they still don't make you grown. 
You know what I'm saying? You you still teach them your ways, how to snap on a person when they don't get your way and all this stuff, or how to you teach them all your negative ways. You know what I'm saying? And that ain't you supposed to. You got to make the, as a better or a better version. That means you know how to overcome problems than you that you went through and all that stuff. But a lot of them never. A lot of people never learn. Uh, the things they they never learn. That's why I be. Oh, we was talking about this kind of earlier and stuff about people that still make excuses for their past. If you still making excuses about your past, that mean you, that mean you never really learned from it. I only did this because of that, and you really about fight. You about to really fight going back and forth with the now, with something that happened back then. That mean you never really learned. You never took the time to even uh you know figure out why you going through what you going through or something like that. So you just really still spreading this this behavior or whatever and, fit and still feel like it's right and all you did was add an excuse behind it and think you can just still do it at any you know any willing time or what i don't know i might have said that wrong though but it's just like my thing is everybody made their mistakes but it's like how did you, what did you do to correct it what did you do now to work on what you say that problem is we gonna keep talking about the problem but not doing nothing to address it or 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 overcome it or because even like this i be saying stuff about the way of life you know what i'm saying even the problems we go through and all that stuff you know, I think the whole goal is to either learn, learn from a situation, uh, adapt with it, or overcome it. Them are the three main things, the three options we got out of situations just to move forward in life. A lot of us want to still, still rely, especially when it comes to history or something like that. We just still live in the history instead of learning from it. And I think history is meant to learn from, not to still keep living, because everything is nothing was perfect back in history. But it was things you can get out of it to better it. Even if we want to look towards our ancestors or if we want to say that or just our past, our past that we have been living, we want to look at it. It still was some corrections that was needed between it. Not saying we're going to get to perfection, but I think the goal is to be better than what happened from before. That's just that's how it's supposed to be. But if we still live in the same thing that our past was doing and even a lot of us, that's why our traumas be what it is. You know what I'm saying? It's like. Because why we look at it, then we be stuck at it. We still live in it. We still never find a way to overcome it. And I tell people to key the thing, a key, a one key to how to overcome your your past and your and your traumas and all that stuff is you got to realize. Um, first, you got to have some type of faith. If you don't have that, you are already lost already. That's how I look at it. People keep on saying it ain't no faith it's about facts and all that stuff, but still, you got to have some type of faith or hope in life to be able to move forward. If you got to look at the things, the knowledge stuff, you will never get anywhere. You got to at least have some type of hope within yourself. You got to believe in something that's not there. Like, even when you make up goals and stuff, that's still something you believe in, even though you don't see it in front of you. You might have seen other people, but I'm just saying, like, with yourself, if you're trying to use, oh, no, nah, if it ain't facts and, and I can't see it, it can't be real. That means you're going to not try anything in life. But everybody still got faith in something, no matter how they want to look at it, if, even if they don't want to acknowledge it. They still got it. You know what I'm saying? So my so the thing is, is like, I think what was I getting to? Uh, you got to, you have to. Uh, uh, That's not what you get along hey, with. What was I getting to? Dang. Take a breath. Take a breath. I got lost. Go ahead. What'd you say? You know, for, you say? for, for me. <clears throat> For me, my my professional life bleeds very much into my personal life. I, I deal with, with, with clients with million dollar pieces of equipment. And so I'm very direct, very tactful. So some sometimes as my daughter will tell me, I don't know how to tone it down or soften it for them because I'm a very logical, direct, black and white kind of individual um, and, I, and I can admit now you know hindsight it, is that the best way to be for our children even though I admit my shortcomings or I admit my whole ways because that's the reason y'all were born because your daddy was a hoe <coughs> and so I can admit that but I don't want that for them and so sometimes as my daughters would say I didn't give them room to express themselves. Um, good, bad, or indifferent. But I, I was still trying to be the best person, best parent that I, I knew how to be. You know, we're not going to all get it right. And 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 to me, armchair quarterbacking is, is, is not the solution. If you're blaming your dad for what you think you didn't get or what I did do, 
then you're, you're missing the whole picture. You know, at, at some point, even as a young adult, you have to, you know, pick, put your big girl panties on and move on because daddy's still here. You know who, who I am. You know, I know who you are. We have to coexist together. Okay. Yeah. That's what I said, but I think our main thing in life, and every a lot of people just don't want to address it, though, but it, like I said, it's a lot of ego and everything. We we just got to have grace, man. That's with everything, for real, man. It's, it is literally nothing wrong with trying to be the bigger person. And that's the only that's the only way to make better things better uh to better your life and just in general you we have to learn how to let go because the thing is everybody going through stuff everybody went through things some people a lot have been worse than you you still if you even got the ability to get on this app you need to be thankful for that but like I said a lot of us already lack gratefulness and appreciation and stuff that's why people when they ask me how my day is I say I'm blessed. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody don't get the day to wake up. What's the use of holding grudges or not being forgiven of certain situations when you're not even promised to live the next day? You know what I'm saying? You literally can be unalive and you want to go out with this little mean ball of face. You know what I'm saying? And the next That is wild. Is that tea time? What's the deal? Is that the real tea time? Because I know it was a that fake one last time here. Oh, that's the real one. Okay. That's crazy. Somebody, somebody got a fake uh, thing of yours. Uh <laughs> But yeah, it's the it, we we lacking that stuff. Like Lily tomorrow, and we'll, cause I be even when I talk to some, I be talking to some people. Be like, I'm gonna do it when I do it. You know, they say stuff like that, right? Yeah, I blocked it. Yeah, I blocked it. Uh, and and I be and I be like, all right, you say that, and and some people be even like, they're gonna do it on their time and all that stuff. But I'm like, even that, like, we keep taking time for granted. That's the problem. We take, we take, we take time like it's just, we, hey, this supposed to be how it be. But like I said, no matter how mad you get, no matter how you ever feel, time literally don't stop because of your feelings. And it's, and it be your little feelings too. That's why I'm going to keep saying it that way because I know it irritate people, make them mad, but I don't care. You know what I'm saying? It's little feelings that you make big. That's the problem. Feelings only meant to last for a couple seconds. People going to say things about you. They're going to do things about you. They're not going to agree with you. It's all type of things. But they don't you there you're not entitled and that's another problem that we have in society right now is the entitlement mentality. You know what I'm saying? We want things to be the we feel like we deserve this or this person's supposed to be like this, but when if somebody said this about you and say that you must feel this way, you don't adapt to this person because they say so. So that how you think they're gonna do that to you? You it's a blessing that somebody do that for you. That's my thing. You got to look at it. Things are a blessing. You got to be grateful for the things. Like, even I'm going to keep going back to this, even with the parent thing. Parents don't have to do what they got to do. They're the, they are their own person. And we had this entitlement like, well, you brung them in the world. You must do that. But we realize there's a lot of parents that don't even follow through with what they be doing or saying anyways. So you got to be thankful that you have a nice parent or a, per a parent that at least tried. They might not do, might not be able to do the, what you wanted them to do, right? But they at least try, and that's why I'm saying, well, the grace got to come in it, because they can only teach you what they know. That's all it is. I, I only so be, uh, it only so we can be bigger, especially when you're laughing. <laughs> nah, man, it's just a, it's an internal thing. It's all about an internal thing. And then once we, once we even, once we even learn that, what was that? What was that? I'm going to be done in a minute, but I'm saying once we once we learn that, though, like the stuff that's inside it, because the thing is, we like I said, that tra it's trauma exchanges. I, it's, I don't, like I said, I don't know if I made that word up, but that's what we have in us. We are when we get in arguments, when we try to match energy and all that stuff, all that is is just whatever problems we don't went through, you know, the, the things that we grew from or whatever. We just we be ready to go the ones with people and stuff because we got stuff within us. So we like, yeah, I couldn't wait. This You don't know me. You don't know what I've been through. We be talking like this, right? But we don't know what each other been through. None of us know what we've been through. But it's all about us not to flex it. It's up to us to overcome it. You know what I'm saying? Because all of us go through stuff, but it could always be worse. Some people been through stuff that they're in the grave right now. You know what I'm saying? You you got to be lucky that you made it through what you've been through and, and show the next person. Because even with this attitude, a lot of us be having kids and all this stuff. And why is we showing our kids the same exact thing? We got to show them how to become the person that overcame the, the, the struggles and all this stuff and overcame these traumas and stuff. But a lot of us is still just want to be staying stuck into these things. Life's going to happen to us no matter what. That's the main thing. 
Life goes, it's going to do what it's going to do. And if you ever realize that we don't always get what we want, that's the thing. Y'all got to just, y'all got to figure this out, that we don't get what we want. Just be thankful for when we do get it. Even if you worked a thousand years, or, oh, I said a thousand years, but like if you worked 50 years or something like that and, 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 and then you get it, be thankful you get it. Don't say, okay, I deserved it. I knew, I, I mean, I, it's a good thing to feel, but, but you don't get what you always deserve. So you got to be least grateful that you did it and you had to you had the chance to do it because not many people do it every a lot of people had plans you know everybody had plans but even the people that's in the grave right now had plans too though so that's how we got to look at life that's just how we got to look at it nothing promised just live day by day the best way you can but yeah i'm done i told y'all i told y'all you should have talked before i started pre doing my pre-session though well, you got the sauce on that one <laughs> <laughs> you was cooking today man you cooking but the thing is, Kev, and that's what I say every day, and, and like I said, in, in your life, I mean, in, when I first came in here, the thing is that as our children blame us for the parents we are, it's just like me blaming white folks being racist. You know, I, I am who I am. If, if I didn't beat you, I didn't neglect you, you know, I may not have done the things that you saw somebody else's parents do. But that, that that doesn't mean that I neglected you or didn't care for you in any kind in any way, shape, or form. I did what I thought was best for you. And you still here, and I'm still here. Anything that we didn't get right, we can acknowledge it and try to make it better. But that takes two people. I can't make it better if you're not willing to try. And that's the, the disconnect that we get with our children sometimes. Yeah, it's also expecting um, pretty much like you said earlier when, oh, you don't want them to go through what you go through, but they're not going to ever go through what you went through because you live differently. So it's almost like when you struggle and you struggle, but you actually get through it and then you raise your kids, giving them everything that they want and they need, they're never, they don't understand that struggle. They're never going to. So it's selfish of you to expect them to work like how you did to get where you are at. And then be like, oh, and when they fall short of it, you're like, you're disappointed. So it's like you can't expect them to do the same thing, have the same work ethic as you did, because they didn't their whole life. They knew, oh, my parents, they got it. They got me. You know, they don't they don't want me to suffer. They don't want me to struggle. But then you turn around and still say, hey, no, I, how come your work ethic is not there? You know what I mean? Like, even but see, if I mean, like, but see I'm a different kind of parent. I've always said to my kids, and I'll say to any other parent, love your kids enough to tell them no. Because the world oh, is not sure. always tell them, we're always going to tell them yes. And I'm right. telling you no because I said no. I don't have to right. explain to you why I'm not buying this for you. Mm -hmm. No, if you if you want it, go out there and earn some money. You know that, right. that's 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 you know I can't get you to so, take out the trash without me telling you to. I can't get you right. to make up your bed without me telling you to. But you want right. me to do all these things without, you know, just because you asked me to. No. That's not how no, the world no. works. Right. No, what I was saying as far as, like, they didn't grow up being like, oh, I'm, I'm, my, my uh, stomach is touching my back. You know, that type of stuff. They didn't struggle like that. Yes, ma'am. They didn't struggle that way. They, they struggled, they, their struggle was mostly, oh, I don't have any, their struggle was mostly, oh, Shit, I ain't struggle like that either, but you know, if I didn't eat them beans for dinner, they were staring at me for breakfast, them beans were sitting so on the table this for another, breakfast. So, this is another thing I wanted to say, though, like, and that's another thing, <laughs> I'm glad y'all said that, though, it's this competition thing, man, because we can't. And that's one thing I had to kind of um take the time and try to I, I I be really spending my time and that's why I say this this app in general right it, it it's teaching me so much especially if you want to just be you know be teachable or something like that and come on here with a purpose you know rather than a lot of every some people come on here entertainment some people want to come on an event I mean it is what it is but I learned so much so I realized even with what you say it's a lot of competition that be the problem to so my boy Vio in the building what's the deal man um. So like even this, I realized that even though we say everybody got struggle and some I even ran into some like if it's an older or older person who's like, Well, you don't know what struggle is and all that stuff, but it ain't it has nothing to do with it. I don't get why we be trying to make competition out of stuff because everybody get affected by things differently. We can't tell somebody how they feel 
about you know something else even though i be always saying that everybody triggers their problems everybody's situation is whatever but my thing is everybody is not and i had to realize that's why i be trying to calm down and i tell people that you know i'm not for everybody and i know some people is going to like they can't take my delivery they can't take all type of stuff though but i never tell them or force them to you know try to come in my area and stuff like if you can't take me you can go somewhere else right but my thing is is that everybody is not built like me everybody not built so yo the little thing that happened to you can be a lot to this person that's not ready for a situation like that so we can't tell nobody how they struggle if they stuff was really serious struggle but it's, it's all it's a mentality thing because a lot of people is not because i can tell a lot of people that y'all weak or something like that because you know that little stuff happened i went through this or something like that but we can't really like you know it invalidates somebody's struggle because everybody's stuff is different but some people are just so dang on sport that the littlest thing is a struggle to them which is sad it's sad though but that's the reason why i'm here for people that can eventually you know uh be able to to you know it, to toughen up. I'm just trying to toughen them up. And if they can't, like I said, it's going to be the people that's going to feel they can't take me, whatever. But I, because the thing is, the reason why I'm, I'm big on toughness or trying to toughen people up is because the world itself is freaking tough. We, we ain't got time for the sensitive stuff. We don't got time for, you know, uh, belly the baby. You got to talk kind to them or nothing because the world, you can't trust the world to do the same thing. We can't trust the world to walk around our triggers and our and our you know our triggers and our 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 feelings and all that stuff. We can't trust that. So that's why I be telling people like, hey, you know what? If you you can't handle me, you can't handle other people talking. This night might not be the lie for you. It's not the other might not be the lie. But some people be just so big on trying to prove themselves and all that stuff. I gotta get out what I gotta get out. So I'm gonna cuss you out in the in the comments or something like that. But you know whatever. You only doing it is hurting yourself. Or you, you're going to make it worse. What? But everybody in for everybody. That's one thing I learned. And that's why I speak the way I speak the way I, I want to and how I, how I am or whatever. I don't like let people kind of change me unless I feel like I'm affecting. But I've helped plenty of people out. So I'm, I'm going to stay firm on what I did because I, I'm big on like trying to. I'm, my, my main thing is to toughen people up because, like I said, it's, just, it's a tough world. So I ain't got time to be light on nobody. That's just me. And it's people that's out here that's helping people for lighter, that's lighter or whatever. And just go to them, you know what I'm saying, until you're ready to get back, you know, to my station. Because eventually the whole goal is to just be ready for this world or try to adapt the best way you can. You know what I'm saying? We got to adapt. We got to. But this softness ain't getting nowhere. You know, being so soft, that's what's causing people to be unalive in themselves and all this stuff because they so they can't take what's going on in this world. But once you toughen up, and that's why you can even thank the bully sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Because it's good that you go through these struggles so you can toughen up and, uh, and figure out how to get out of it or it'd be easier to get through it. So these things that get thrown in our life, it is meant for us to overcome. That's what it is. So, yeah, what's soft? You said what's soft? That's a subjective thing. It's just like, you know, you've been toughening, but soft, it's, it's just, it's different. I guess a person that's softer than the tough, I guess, I don't know, but soft is like a person that really can't take it, for real. That, that That's that's very, very sensitive just to life itself. I would just say that. A person that can't take a couple words, right? Go ahead, uh, uh, Codify. But yeah, it's everybody, it's subjective, though. Okay, Um, I want to let y'all know the things that I've talked about, you could go, like, Google um, and find out more about them, because I'm not a person that likes to tell people what I believe. Uh, I, the things I say is, is can be backed up by some kind of information. But I wanted to give y'all something when it comes to this competitive world. You can go to YouTube and put in human resources, um, social engineering of the 21st century, and you're going to see a two-hour video. And when they come to school, they did a, um, a comparison what they do is they put the children in groups and then within the group they gave them a project and told them to let's see who could let's see who could do this the best you know they, they pretty much pit, pitted them against each other and then then like the next day they put them in different groups and they told them to work together and them working together yielded a, a way better result than them competing with each other. Mm -hmm. That's just one of the things, sections in that video, but it, it goes across a whole broad spectrum of the social engineering that they put us through 
in this society. Matter of fact, the first thing that's said in the video is give me a baby and I give you any kind of man. That's the first thing that's said in there. And I'm telling you, I think for us to kind of deprogram and reprogram ourselves with a proper way of thinking, we have to know what they've done to us. Uh -huh. You know, like we got to like to like to heal somebody from a toxin. You got to remove them from the toxin. You can't try to heal them while they still exposed to it. So mentally, I think we, we should go look at that video. Matter of fact, Kevin, you look at that video, you might want to do a show on it. May may you know make it a thing, but once you look mm -hmm. at that video, you see everything in you it. You said, is, is it on your page? I know you be having some stuff, though. Uh, it's on your page. <laughs> you know what? I tried to put a clip on there, and they removed oh. the sound. Oh, dang. Wow. What, you said, what is it I called? I got to look it up. Human Resources. It's on YouTube? So, yeah, you're on YouTube. Human Resources. Social Engineering in the 21st Century. For for the twenty first century, one of those. And this video it's so much stuff in this video. You're gonna end up watching it at about four or five times. Cause they gonna drop some things, it's gonna get you thinking, you know, and then you're gonna miss some stuff. Cause every time I've listened to it, I've saw something in there and was like, damn, I did not know or you know, I didn't catch that the first two or three times. Mm -hmm. So um, check that video out. You may make it a show. So I got hold on. I got so uh, human resources. He says social engineering. Yep, social engineering in the twenty first century, something oh, like that. It's like a two hour video. Okay. Okay. I got 20th, the 20th century. Probably that's it. That's probably it. Okay, I got century. you. And it's a one, yeah, one hour and, and, and 59. Okay, it's probably that. Okay, I got you. I'm going to say yeah. All right. Oh, well, yeah. Um, what's up, face? You know, I got to say, it, we going off impulse in here. You know what I mean? <laughs> You tried to be funny yesterday. You sent me two live shares late at night because you was doing your live last night. And I went to the FYP and I was like, what is he doing over there? Trying to be funny. Because you what were you like mean? my father. Oh, wow. I forgot. <laughs> Why did I send you that? Bro? I forgot you. <laughs> I forgot about that. I'm like, oh, yeah. I was just sending it to everybody. I forgot about your situation. <laughs> yeah, you good. <laughs> you free today. I'm going to do it again, though. Whatever. <laughs> on purpose. That's you know I how you tell us the, uh, what'd you say, the what on purpose? The Having love a great each other. day on purpose. Have a great day. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to send that invite on purpose. <laughs> there you go, and I'm going to check it for the FYP before I come through this room. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm about to really see you go off. I'm going to see you go off and post that time. <laughs> you might. You might. Some people know oh, how man. to trigger my uh, emotions a little bit. Just a little nah. bit. What's going on with this topic? What's going on with this topic? Is finding yourself real? Do you feel like it's a real thing? Absolutely. I think okay. I, I, here, here's why I say that I believe in finding yourself. If you think about it, everybody, who we are when we're, let's say we coming into the world, who we are coming into the world, we really don't know ourselves 100%. We know what we were taught. We know what we were conditioned to. But once you're out in the world and you no longer have mommy and daddy to back you up on every single thing, then you're going to have to figure out some hard situations and some difficult situations to find the real you. So when I say go and find yourself or tell people to go find themselves, people have a real big problem of being a chameleon. They switch into somebody else depending on the social circle or the conversation that they're in. But be who you are, whatever that is, just stand 10 toes in it and don't change your narrative. 
a lot of people change their narratives, they change their personality, they tone, they talk, they change everything based on who they're with and what they're speaking about. Mm-hmm. And that's going to take a lot of hard lessons. A lot of hard lessons. So, so I, I've never gone through that. So does that mean that I haven't found myself yet? But no, I, again, I, I, I think, don't, no, I don't, I think I, you live I, in a fixation no, no, lifestyle I'm, I'm, that you have no problems I'm, with nothing or, you know, you don't you don't have to go through certain things. And I applaud your life if you never right, had to do it. Right. So be great. I mean, because, you know, I, like I said before, I'm, I'm a very logical, analytical person. I, I, I don't code switch the same way I talk around white folks. The same thing. Some, some things, sometimes I don't say things around white folks because I don't want to validate their point of view towards us anyway. But, but right. the thing is that the, right. the, the things that I say on this panel or on any panel are the same things that I say to my grown daughters or the same things I said to my daughters as they were growing up. They didn't appreciate it. They didn't understand it. Maybe now they slightly understand it, but I can't live their lives. Mm. That, that's pretty much what I said, though. You are one way from what you're taught and what you're conditioned to. And once you become an adult and out in the world, you learn your own way. So they they take some of your conditions. They understand it. But a lot of things that they probably do now are some things that they do. They didn't get it from you. You relearn life. You relearn life. I, I, I agree. But, but but in that, you know, in them learning themselves, which goes contrary to what they've been taught, they also have to understand that they have to suffer the consequences for the choices they make. Well, I agree there. I Listen, I tell my kids all the time, every action has a reaction and every reaction can possibly have a repercussion. And some of those repercussions I cannot assist you with. So be mindful of your actions. Mm. I, I agree all I know. Oh, um, after everybody gets, well, not get finished, but when she gets finished after these, I'm going to put my input on it. Because I did want to hear everybody's angle of this topic, though. I think I heard everybody that said their part on this one, though. But after you get done, I'm going to tell you the reason why I think a different way on this. But I asked this just to figure out. So, uh, number, I guess the first uh, question, can you find yourself by yourself? Mm, you can do i agree mm-hmm. with finding yourself by yourself no okay. no why um i am just a person i i wholeheartedly believe in therapy a hundred percent um because something some triggers some traumas you're gonna have to really unpack that and depending on where your mental is at that moment, it may not be safe for you to unpack it alone. And you might have to deal with someone, not saying they have to have you know, all of these degrees, but just make sure that you have a support system that's helping you get to a lot of spaces because otherwise you're gonna live in this life of a freaking bubble, always mm-hmm. being triggered by a whole bunch of crap in your adult life and that is not cute. Right, that's right. Um... Can you trust yourself 100% and why? I trust myself now. 100%? 100%. I trust myself now because I don't don't respond on impulse and I don't act on impulse anymore. I knew you was going to go with that word. (laughs) I didn't even do that on purpose. (laughs) No, I don't because listen, where I'm from, I'm, I'm from down south. You know, you had to move and shake the way you needed to do it to stay alive. So, of course, you're just thinking quick on your feet. But now as an adult and removing myself out of that surrounding, now I can actually think about how I'm going to move and be logical with it. Not everything is meant for me to take part in. And now if something if I'm planning to do something, listen, I'm the first one to back out of anything. So my friends will tell you I will back out in a minute. If I am prepped, getting ready to walk out the door and something in me say, no, don't go, I'm not going. Mm-hmm. I'm trusting the person that's me. I'm trusting me because nobody is going to take care of you or tend to you or worry about you the way that you take care of yourself. So if your inner self is telling you lay back, chill, not tonight, that means lay back, chill, not tonight. Uh-huh. Now, my younger self, 
I would have ignored it and went anyway. And maybe that's why I was in some situations in my younger days. But after all the work that I had to put in and actually deal with that reflection in the mirror, I trust myself. I trust myself to take care of myself because there's only one myself. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the last one. And the reason why I'm about to go last, I want to see, I think a lot of people might, uh, I just want to see how they're going to think against my way. To come That's what... just... Huh? <laughs> you said what? You about to come and stir the pot. You already know. You already know. I do this for a reason. But I ain't even that. It's just I'll be trying to tell, you know, different point of views because really, who knows if I agree with all this stuff I put up here. You know what I'm saying? But I just want to hear everybody else, though. That's what I wanted to see. But um, when when you tell the person you need to find yourself, what do you personally mean? And how are you able to know if they already themselves already? So I've told a couple people to go find themselves. Yes, honey. Yes, baby, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cook you something. Give me one second. Um, when I told people to go find themselves, what I mean is if you're still living in a space, say you deal with some traumatic issues or whatever, and you're still living in that space, even though it happened years ago, how can you really get to your next stage of life if you haven't dealt with the space that you've already encountered? So my personal beliefs when you go through things, you're going to have to grieve it, especially when it comes to developing you. I've had to, in my stage of moving to where I am now, I had to bury my old self, mm -hmm. grieve my old self, and heal my old self. That's how I made it to where I am now. So when I say, when I say to go home, <laughs> when I tell people to go find themselves, I just think some people need to sit with themselves a lot more. And a lot of people are terrified of themselves. That's why they surround themselves around barakatuh. Face to truth. Uh, how did you find yourself? Can you please explain? Explain to me how did you find yourself? Please. Sure. How did have you found yourself, sir? No, I didn't miss. You haven't? You haven't? You he ain't gotta worry about that man blocking. <laughs> Yeah, he found that block because I don't know why he come in here and make his own. I don't know why people be, got the nerve. They got nerve, man. Come in here and make their own questions. I do those questions. What are you but, talking about? But face, <laughs> face, face the, the, the thing that I see with people is that they, they can't get to the grieving process because they can't admit to the, the trauma. Agree. And admit their, Agree. They admit their own complicity in that trauma. Agreed. They don't we want to build these that. fictitious lifestyles and this fictitious facade of what your life really <coughs> is. And you're not willing to go deep enough in that to figure out what the real problem is. And what we don't get in Chicago, you could tell me if I'm wrong, but when you experience certain levels of trauma, you stay stunted in that state. So I had to realize when my trauma occurred on my behalf, I didn't want to deal with it. So at a 27 year old grown ass woman, when I got into certain situations, I was not responding as a 27 year old. I was responding as a seven year old because it stunted my growth and I constantly responded out of emotions. That's what I mean when I say, hey, go find yourself and unpack some stuff, because that's how you can really develop so many different levels about you. If you're willing to unpack it, grieve it, heal from it and move on from it. Go, uh, go ahead, uh, codify. All right. Um, I'm going to try to uh, touch on one and three at the okay. same time. And the basis of me saying what I'm going to say is, um, like, we don't have a culture that, um, that, that has a, a system in place to deal with traumatic life experiences, like the loss of loved ones, especially a parent. We just kind of like look at people and see, you know, if they doing anything crazy. And if not, we don't really address it. Because what I learned, especially in EMS, is that it could be days, months, years later when things really hit a person um 
when it comes to abandonment issues like this society that we're living in the template is mother father child and this is what's necessary to thrive in this society there's other ones and other structures but here that's the structure and if you have one of those people missing it's just something about that piece of that structure that's missing that's like in our mind we may use that as a reason to not do certain things like when you see these videos of like a child seeing their parent after 18 and 21 years when they get out of pre you know prison and they falling out crying you know because they needed that person in their life and they wasn't there and they you know they had those emotional responses when they see them so i think one of the things that a person may do or need to do is to be alone without being lonely mm, hey. you, you know what i'm saying like it's, it's like you don't have to be lonely when you are alone so i think like like when i'm at home and nobody is here i arrange my house my private space to where it's best for me you know like i don't mess with myself i don't bother myself I don't annoy myself like things are the way I want it for me at that particular moment. And it's comfortable, it's peace, harmony, you know, the aesthetics and everything, what I have on the walls. And then with that, with the, in, in this, in this environment, in this condition, I was able to actually open up some of those boxes that I put those traumatic life events in and unpack them and it was hard i had sleepless nights i cried a lot it was some tough stuff to deal with and i did it like i had to think past a lot of uncomfortable thoughts and i have a post in my content where i say if you were neglected as a child that's your parents fault if you are neglected as an adult, that is your fault. Like once we become adults, we get to that place where we are able to control the aspects of our lives. It's our responsibility to stop neglecting ourselves because we was taught. A lot of us are taught to do it. I'm not saying everybody, but many of us were taught to actually neglect ourselves. And I think when you get your environment where you have some kind of peace and harmony, you able to then without the distractions unpack some of those things that keep us un in unhealthy mm -hmm. relationships where we take things from people that we don't need to take because we scared those people to leave or we'll do things to people because because they may leave or they did leave we, we seen the videos of the people busting windows you know on TikTok. you know those things are unhealthy and it, it can ruin your life and if you don't unpack those things develop tools to uh, manage those things and then actually use those tools no <laughs> you you will not you will not you know be able to trust yourself 100 percent. i think i touched on all three of them and you know when we when we hear about these things and we see these people this is how you know if they found themselves. This is how you know. And you being some somebody who actually went through the experience of unpacking these things. <laughs> and like me, I did it myself. I got on the internet, did the research, looked up abandonment issues and all of these other things that we go through. Some people may need to go to a professional. Because these therapists, that's their job. Their job is not to heal somebody. Their job is to get somebody to open up so they can help them develop the tools to use to help manage that stuff. Because only that person could use that, that person, only that person could use those tools to help them manage those life events. You get what I'm saying? 
So mm -hmm. you still got to do the work, whether you do it yourself and get the tools or you get a therapist or you utilize even your village. The village is always present. We just we just ne we neglect to pick the right village members. You know, that that spiritual person, that confidant. You get what I'm saying? Those those people who are going to be there. It's a video on here of a, a dude on stage where he was just falling, you know, and he was like, you need people that's going to be there to catch you when you're falling because the falling is not the problem. It's the hitting the ground that's the, that hurt. So who do you have in your life when you get that medical diagnosis? When you, um, you know, when you need somebody to tell you that's the wrong person for you, you know, just who going to be there? Who going to show up and knock on your door when you may, may, may lose a grandparent or favorite uncle or auntie or parent? Who going to knock on the door and check on you? You know? help you through these situations so that's what i have to say about that and uh, thanks for letting me speak oh yeah for sure my brother so what i'm gonna do real quick <clears throat> actually i'm gonna do this do a little cliffhanger i'm gonna tell y'all my point of view then y'all tell me how y'all feel about it but after i do that after i tell my point of view i'm gonna refresh the live real quick am i the only one that's that. hearing the echo I'm yeah that's just you yeah you got to probably drop am and come back you drop down and come back up. You probably answer the phone or something. <clears throat> send it back to you. So I'm about to uh, say my part, uh, what I feel about the topic. Um, so uh, it's finding yourself real. You? Uh, me myself, I don't think, I don't think it's real at all. Um, I feel like. Uh, you can always better yourself, right? You can learn from a, a lot of things. Uh, should be right back. Uh, uh, <clears throat> she was one of the main ones I wanted to hear this, but uh, is uh, I don't, I, I think that uh, dang, I done lost my, <laughs> but basically, I don't think it's real for real. I think you can always better yourself. You can find more about yourself. But I don't think you ever could truly, you know, find yourself. Um, and can you? Uh, and the reason why I say that, I'm gonna say the reason why I say that is because as long as I feel like as long as you can, um, got the option to change for the better or the worse, you, you really would never. It, it would never be yourself because when you say you found yourself, that means that's all that is from there, right? And now somebody did explain to me earlier, well, you know what yourself is now. Okay, I get that though. You can find yourself now, but as long, like I said, as long as you got the option to be better, you you never know. And this is another thing I thought about, and I never thought, well, I just think about this now after hearing so much. Like even this, how bad it is. Like if you go to another area, because humans are adaptable, we just adapt. So we we can go to an, and live somewhere else for another 15, 30 years and be something, it'd be different. I mean, we might have our little solid thing that we got in us, though, but it'd be more about ourselves we didn't know. And we can adapt a uh, certain ways that we just never knew that we probably was going to adapt to. Like, we learn another whole language. We ain't know that part about ourselves. We know, you know, it's all, it's just so much. It's just, just the way we act. We didn't know our capabilities. It's more capabilities we probably got that we don't really know about ourselves. So I'm, I look at it as like the more we learn and more we change, we will probably never know ourselves for real. We just would never know. You know what I'm saying? As long as you got that option. So that's that's just my input on that. Can you find yourself by yourself? Um, I think it's a, like a, it's a it's a 80 20 type situation or you could say a 90 10 um yeah most the majority of work is yourself but i think uh when you hear other inputs and take different things or tell people tell you things about you that you didn't see um that's where the other like 10 percent or 20 percent come from or i could say 20 percent 80 20 i'm gonna say that so whatever you, you could take what people to say about you that you just blinded to and you can you can uh find more about yourself on that too so I think that's it ain't just that. Uh can you trust yourself a hundred percent? I'ma say, uh, me myself, I don't think you could trust no human. And I'm a human and I I, I don't trust myself because uh and it ain't just a bad thing, it's just in reality. Um, I'ma say because 
uh, that as long as you got feelings, you don't know how you're going to handle different things, you know, and then we procrastinate on different things. We tell ourselves we're going to do something and we don't do it a lot of times. So we got the option to do that procrastinate. So we don't always live up to what we say about ourselves. And things happen, like even things in life, I wouldn't say trust your car, trust none of that stuff, because things don't happen in your life. You might make decisions that and, and change your mind about it just the next second or whatever. You so we you know, that comes with the even with the um the about knowing yourself for real. So it's, you know, just in reality, I wouldn't say I think our trust really belongs to like a higher being or a creator, but a lot of people don't believe in a higher being. So that's the only thing you can trust a hundred percent, right? And otherwise, I don't think you can trust no human, including yourself. But that's just reality in my book. And then when you tell a person you need to find yourself, what do you personally mean by that? And how are you able to know uh, they already found themselves? So if I did say that, it would be just like find uh, you find out your more your triggers and find out how to overcome, you know, different things or whatever. And you need to, you know, know more about why you react these ways to certain things and why you have this type of mindset and okay for sure for sure for sure yeah i'm about to reset anyways though and um uh, you know that's my that's just my point of view though and i appreciate i appreciate all y'all um and i'm about to reset real quick if y'all come back in um i'm gonna be on for some more maybe a few more hours and i'll call it it's like my longest night i'm gonna do anyways though so um i'm gonna reset and uh, i'll catch up with y'all man <clears throat> give me about like about a couple minutes and lives you make it one new subscriber.